Hello, everybody. Am I coming in clear? Is, uh, is everything visible and audible? Malambique says, hello, Lemmy, my dear. And Reading 3640 Studio says, this is an epic moment. It is an epic moment. It's pretty epic. <laughs> All right. So, as you might recall from last week, if you were watching, I put Mod Podge all along one side in order to kind of seal it so that it wouldn't be so dusty. Um, and... Wow, like it's so much better with the Mod Podge on. I, I did two things. One, I put Mod Podge over everything, but also I put uh, tape in the seams here. Like along there, I cut out a strip of tape that was exactly kind of the uh, thickness of this this area, um, which just makes it a much smoother surface. You know, it covers up any imperfections. But um, it was a really good move. Like looking at this, it just like look at that how like glossy it is and the gloss isn't the point of this but it shows you how smooth the surface is because like notice when it catches the light like any imperfections you see in the gloss those imperfections will be the only ones visible once you paint this because the gloss is basically tell telling you you know where you know what what the shape actually is like like the fact that you can see like right there there's like kind of a line you can see when i kind of you know, no matter what angle I turn it to, you can kind of see that. The, you know, the kind of the glare kind of changes over that point. That shows us that that's like a permanent kind of part of the shape. But like a lot of these imperfections under the surface, you'll notice don't actually catch the light. And so those imperfections aren't really real. Um, so that's great. And this is really cool. So like comparing that to this side, it's this one just feels a lot it's kind of hard to tell but it feels it's definitely a lot dustier it's more rigid it's more sandpapery um and it can crack right so like if i just bang on this real hard it could make like a crack right here and then all the pieces will just crumble off right but on the other side if i did that well this has a layer of kind of it's kind of got this like flexible skin around it so it's going to kind of keep everything nice and taut together even if there is a little crack pieces aren't going to fall off at this point. It's got this whole protective layer that's keeping everything together. Um, and that's really what we want. And most importantly, I really want this Mod Podge to kind of serve as a secondary layer of defense against the water. So when I put the Flex Seal over this, hopefully the water doesn't get through the Flex Seal. But if it does, hopefully it will pool in the Mod Podge, you know, kind of layer, rather than getting underneath to the water putty. Because if it gets to the water putty, um, then that's going to suck because it will, you know, soak it up and it will become flexible. You'll have to wait a few days for it to dry. So this is ideal. You know, the fact that it's, um, that, you know, it really feels it, like it's been sealed really well. Like you can just kind of get a sense for these things. And I just have a feeling that this is going to really protect it from the water. Like this plus a layer of flex seal over it. I, like, I don't think any water is going to get in, and that's great. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did on this side, on this side, and also go over a few bits that we didn't quite get as much, like the stern and, you know, bits around the splash rails on the other side. Um, we're going to just do the whole thing up in Mod Podge because it really worked out well on this side. Um, and then, hopefully, I guess I'll leave it to dry for, like, an hour after we do that. I don't know what I'll do for that. I guess I'll just leave the stream and then wait an hour and there will just be an hour of blank space in the stream. I mean, that's possible. Um, I don't know. I, we'll see once we get there. But for now, I'm going to put Mod Podge all over everything. Then I'm going to let it dry for an hour or two. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to spray it with Flex Seal outside. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what we're planning for today. Um, I'm looking forward to this step being done because we've been working on the hull for so long. I really want to get to the rest of the model. Um, but 
you know, I really do like to get the hole out of the way because, you know, it's just, I like to kind of like finish a shape totally before I move on to the next shape. So like the superstructure, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, stop halfway through. I'm going to, you know, work on the whole superstructure and then move on to like the rest of the model. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I think we're, uh, I think we're pretty close to being done with this. Uh, let's see, what are, what are folks saying? Um, do you use matte clear to go over the paint, says Bassingen. I don't because, because Mod Podge is not waterproof. Um, so Flex Seal, you know, is designed to be waterproof. It's designed to prevent leaks. That's the whole idea of it. Um, whereas Mod Podge is designed to kind of make collages, to like seal over paper so that it's a little bit glossier and that it, it's like a glue essentially, right? And glue isn't necessarily waterproof. It's water resistant, but it's not waterproof. Like, like that's why like I'm not using this as the outside layer, right? I'm just using this as kind of an under layer. That's kind of a backup plan. So I think like if this gets a little bit of water, it could take it. But if it, I literally just submerge this whole thing in water right now, I don't think it would take long to get through the Mod Podge layer. So it's not really waterproof. It would start kind of, it would start turning into a sort of slime after a while, I think. Um, you know, so for that reason, I'm not going to put it on the outside of the model, even if it would look good. I could try that and see what would happen, but I'm not so sure it would work. Um, so I, I probably won't. Um, yeah, but I, I could try it. Um, I mean, if it comes off at that stage, that's kind of okay because, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to experiment. Uh, let's see. So, well, you could fill that hour with a lot of rambles on tugs, says Dopey Duck, one, two, three. Yeah, but do I want to spend an hour or two literally just sitting here talking? Um, probably not. I mean, it's, it, it's, see, I hate this part of the process because it's really hard to, like, get across on camera. It's basically a lot of waiting, right? Like, like, let me get started here. But essentially, the whole thing is basically going to be, like, the flex seal part, how am I supposed to really get that across? It's literally just me kind of spraying the model and then waiting 24 hours and spraying it again, and waiting another 24 hours. Like, it's going to take so long for that to actually be done. And I'm guessing, like, by next week, like, this week we're, you know, we're finishing, we're flex sealing, we're spraying the thing and everything. Well, next week, I think what we're going to do is um, we're going to we're gonna actually test the model and see if it floats, um, which, you know, I'm pretty sure it will. And I'll show you how to weight it and stuff. So I think that, like, we're going to put a huge weight underneath the thing to kind of make sure it sits at the right level. Um, I think uh, we're going to fill some sort of vat with water. And then we're going to put the model in there and kind of try to get it to sit at the right level. It's going to be very echoey because we'll probably do it in a bathroom. Um, you know, so it's, um, you know, it's going to be uh, an interesting video. And then probably the week after that, we'll do the superstructure. I want to say we're going to do the superstructure um, in, you know, next week. But the more I think about it, it's probably best to wait on that. Because I do just want to make sure that the thing floats before I do anything else. And I shouldn't say floats. I should say is watertight because it will definitely float, right? I mean, this thing, there's so much air inside of this hole, right? Imagine if you take this and you push it down into the water, right? The pressure is maybe going to make a hole and it's going to kind of push water in. However, that's not you know, that's not definite. So I have to kind of, I have to test it. I have to check. And then if water starts getting in, you know, I'll pull it out of the water and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to dry and I'll figure out where the leak is. Um, but I don't really see where there would be a leak. I mean, cause the thing is, I know on uh, blue nose, he did leak a little bit. And the problem was it was around the, uh, where the rudder is. Cause I cut into the back of the stern and slid the rudder in, and so that created seams. And I didn't do that on this model. Um, and you know, it's and, and the reason I did it on Blue Nose is so the uh, you know so the rudder would be nice and rigid. Um, and this one's nice and rigid, but only because it's covered in very hard, you know, water putty. Um, but if I put it in the water and then it leaks, the water putty will saturate, and then of course this will become flimsy again. 
and it will never quite be the same after it saturates with water. I mean, it'll basically turn to a dust inside of the, of the Mod Podge, which isn't the worst thing, but it won't be quite as rigid, and also it will, you know, it will lose some of its shape. Like, it will, some of the, 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 uh, the putty here that's making this look smooth will kind of crack or crumble or kind of look weird underneath. That's what happened with Blue Nose. And he still looks okay, but his, you know, and, and, and he's always looked this way. So it's not like he's changed in the time you guys have seen him. I mean, but he looked a little bit better initially before I put him in the water. Um, so, you know, water did get in, but it's just, it only, it only damaged him very slightly. So I didn't really mind it. I was like, okay, well, that's fine. I mean, I thought he was, you know, I thought that would be really serious if I were to, you know, put him in the water and if he were to leak. But he leaked a little bit and was pretty much fine. But it did compromise the shape slightly. Um, so I want to avoid that with this model. That would be great if I could keep the inside totally dry. Let's see. What tug is he making, asks the Gillen group. Um, I, don't, I don't know for sure. At first I was saying Zebedee, but I kind of feel like making this um, a star tug now. I It would be a pretty big deal to make it top head. <laughs> um, but I feel like, like, independent from the fact that a top hat replica would be pretty cool, considering we don't have the real one, it's just, I kind of feel like making top hat in general. Like, I think he's a really cool model. And looking at this hole, for some reason, I kind of think Top Hat. So maybe him, but he might also not be a very good tutorial model to do, considering he's so complicated with the head. Everything else is the same, but, you know, the, the fact that his head is such a different mechanism and that I have to kind of learn that on camera, might it might not be the best model to do. Like if I made Big Mac, then I know I could do that with all the materials I have. I wouldn't really need to do anything new or crazy. Big Mac would be really cool. Because I don't think I want to make Zebedee anymore. I think I like the idea more. I think this will be Top Hat, honestly. At this stage, I feel like making Top Hat. very boring part of the process. Like I said, I'm literally just back and forth, back and forth.
think I did this last time. I think I'm gonna like cut in here too with like a piece of cardboard or something, just so that it's like really defined. Because the thing is, the more layers of Mod Podge or putty or whatever that you put over the top, the more likely it is that you're going to kind of round out corners that you don't want to round out. You know, because just the more layers you put over something, the more distorted it kind of becomes. So I'm trying to make sure I don't put too much putty like over the actual corner where the splash rail meets the side of the hole. Because if I do that, then you know, it's not really going to be a corner anymore. It's going to be more of a... of a kind of a gradual slumpy curve. We really want these, you know, the place where the splash rail meets the hole to be nice and defined. Just cut right, like, underneath there. In fact, let me do the same thing right here. And the thing is, if you let it sit for a while, then if you try to kind of go back over it and touch it with your finger, it's not going to spread in quite the same way. So I like to dip my finger in water, just so that it'll actually let me kind of move the Mod Podge around. Let's see. Sodor Caterpillar says, I'm working on my wooden railway scale zip right now. Thanks for the approval on Sunshine. The approval. Zips almost got his main body shape completed. Hopefully he could he could stream. Hopefully we could stream one day. That would be cool. The approval. Who provided approval on Sunshine? <laughs> Is it possible to appro to provide approval? You don't work for some sort of sunshine producing company, do you? I need approval on this, boss. Oh, sure. It's approved. Put the big red stamp on it, fellas. <laughs> Imagine making a Johnny Cuba model, says Scottish Twin Productions. Yeah, that would be crazy big if it was in, like, this scale. I think Johnny Cuba is a lot bigger than Izzy. He might not be, but I get the sense that he is. Like, it's, it's really hard to tell, though. It can be very misleading without actual measurements. Because we never really get a look at Johnny Cuba straight on from the side. I mean, his model's all over the port, so there's maybe a shot somewhere, but I can't think of any. It sucks that Johnny Cuba is almost definitely one of those ones that just got thrown out. Like, it's very unlikely that his model actually survived.
How do you curve the front of the tug, says the Gillen group. That's exactly what this tutor tutorial series is for. It takes forever for me to explain how to do that. It's not hard, but it just takes a lot of... I can't. I kind of can't explain it without showing you. So I would just go back to part one for that. Why do we have 23 people when I haven't talked for like 40 seconds? That blows my mind. Like that's the most we've had in the whole stream. And yet this is the most boring moment. Lily Lightship would be an interesting model. Yeah, she would be. I don't know what her dimensions are, but she would. I thought about her before. Is she'd be really cool to have that huge like light superstructure? And also, the hull is different. It's like a little bit more blocky at the back. It kind of does the thing that Izzy's does, where it like kind of has this really big bulbous kind of swoop down for the stern. Um, very different from the tugboats, which have kind of a more elegant kind of curve upward. That would be really cool. how it just it'll, it'll lean right over and land on the part you just painted if you don't stop it it's just such a drama queen it's just it'll topple right over you know you're you're painting it and then it's like no i want to go over there and it'll just It'll just it'll it'll just slam down on the keel that you just painted and be like, I there's dust all over that now. You covered yourself in dust. Why? I wanted to go down there. Now fix it. <laughs> See how like the color of it changes too? Now it's like kind of this rich, kind of yellowish brown. 
like that. You know, that's because we've gotten it all wet. And keep in mind, I mean, this putty has been dry for like two weeks. So that'll show you how this stuff really is not waterproof. You know, it's literally the putty is just on here for form. That really is all it's here for. You know, it's to make it look good. But, you know, the flex seal is really, and the Mod Podge to a degree, are the sealants. Those are the things that are keeping it waterproof. I am just so happy with the shape of this. Like, I really can't fully even describe how satisfied with this I am because I've made so many harbor tugs in my life. And this one actually, like, the shape, it really nails the shape. I get the same feeling off of this hole that I get off of, like, the behind the scenes pictures of the models all waiting to be filmed. Jay says, Lemmy, darling, I am struggling with the test model. I don't know if I made, uh, I have made the deck too big or the superstructure too small. If possibly, you could me and you have a one-to-one, one -one, please. Um, well, I've, uh, there's a lot of people making models right now, Jay. There's no reason that I should give you private tutoring over everybody else. Um, you know, but I have faith in you. I think that you'll definitely be able to make something great. You know, even if it's like, like, I just want to see where you're at, you know, even if you don't end up making a tug, I still want to see what you can do. So I'm looking forward to it regardless of how it turns out. But also I would say, you know, remember what the measurements are, because, you know, those measurements are right. You know, I mean, it's the ones that I put up on Twitter, anyhow, the wooden railway measurements, unless I've made some horrible error, but I don't think I have, you know, but, you know, it may, the thing is that, you know, the tugs are a lot wider than people think they are. So, you know, I would urge you against judging the thing before the superstructure and head are on, because if you're just looking at the hole right now, well, of course it looks too wide. It hasn't been properly framed. You know, the, the model's gonna look very wide if it doesn't have the superstructure on there, which makes it look narrower, because it breaks up the deck, right? If you look at the model just the, uh, you know, with just the deck, then it's going to have, you're just gonna see the full uninterrupted surface, so it's going to look very different. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I would try to sort it out on your own, too, because if I could just sort out all the problems, I'd make all the models myself. You know, that's exactly why I'm bringing on people for Tugs TWR. It's because I can't do it all myself. You know, of course, I could, I could advise and make every model really good and, and help solve any problems that arise. But if I did that, if I micromanaged like that, then there would really be no point in bringing so many people on to help. But I wish you luck. Let's 
Let's see. I've been making Warrior for the past few days. I wouldn't say it's been a breeze, but it's looking good, I think, says Spacey Boy. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah, the important thing is that you enjoy the process. You know, so, and that you don't hurry it. You want to make sure that when you're making a model, you just take it nice and slow. I'm well aware that you can't see what I'm doing right now. But rarely does anybody ask during these streams how I'm actually doing something in real time. Like, I don't think anyone's paying any attention to, like, the actual thing I'm doing to the model. I, I have a feeling that the people who actually follow along follow along much later when the stream is already out. And those are really the people that I'm targeting this towards. I mean, you know, if you guys are enjoying watching this in real time, that's great too. Um, but really what I, the reason I make these is for people who are going to follow along. And I imagine streams like this, those people are probably going to skip through a lot because, like, I'm not really explaining anything right now.
I don't think I've gone along the actual bottom of the keel yet. I should probably do that. See, it's weird. Like, I could have really, I could have done this part off camera, but I am, like, I have to do it before I do the first layer of flex seal, which I do want to do on camera. And it's interesting because this part, like, no real new information is being conveyed here. It's just exactly what I did last time, but just a mirror image. But it would be weird to do this today and then start streaming, because it's like, well, I could have just streamed the whole thing, so why didn't I stream it? Let's see, Bassigen says they're both good in their own ways. Tugs has longer, more mature stories, but Thomas has a major lore and natural, beautiful settings and stories. I imagine that was a response to which is better, Thomas or Tugs. Um, I definitely like Tugs a lot better, but like I agree they are different. The thing is, I think I would like Thomas better if it was done in the style of Tugs, as in if the stories were much longer and deeper. And, you know, if the, if it was all voice actors, you know, the, the CGI series was kind of going in that direction. It went like halfway towards how Tugs was done. I think Thomas, you know, would be like, like, I love the classic series, but I think I'd love it even more if the stories were like 20 minutes long. And if they went into a lot of like, not a lot of detail, but if they went like, they made a lot of dialogue heavy scenes that really kind of conveyed things strongly. Because in the classic series, it's just like, like, they just kind of say what they mean instead of, like, kind of slowly dragging it out through dialogue. Like, if you want to, like, like a, take a classic episode, like, um, you know, hmm, I don't know, like, what, what could you take? That's a good example of this. Like, I, I guess that's the thing is, like, you know, Edward and Gordon, right? Where Edward pushes Gordon up the hill. We don't really get time to go into detail about how they both feel about that. About the fact that Gordon is constantly being lazy and Edward's constantly have to pick up, having to pick up his slack, you know, and the fact that, like, you know, he's, he doesn't even appreciate him. You know, if it was, like, a 20-minute long episode, we could have gone back to the sheds and then we could have seen how bad Edward felt about it, that Gordon just kind of left him there. We could also have more build-up in the earlier part of the episode where Gordon goes into more detail on his hatred of trucks and that sort of thing and, maybe you see him, you know, pulling the express more and like you could really like you could take that story and make it 20 minutes if you wanted to and make it really like a lot deeper and cooler and you know the original's great but like I don't believe in this idea of like you know oh well that's not a 20 minute story that's a 4 minute story it only works at 4 minutes it's like no you could add more scenes you could expand on the ideas you can take that and expand upon it and make it bigger and greater. And that doesn't just mean tacking stuff on the beginning and end. It means literally, literally taking the story, stretching it out. That's kind of what the adventure begins did, and it did it brilliantly. Um, and so I would, I would like, I, I think I would prefer Thomas in the style of Tugs with the pacing of Tugs, that sort of thing. 
Um, I, I, I like Tugs. The way Tugs tells stories is my favorite structure for telling stories out of everything I've seen. So, yeah, I mean, I love the lore for Thomas. That goes without saying. I love everything about Thomas, but the way they structure stories and the way that they like, I, I think that Tugs is a little bit cooler the way it does it. Um, let's see. Blue Tender Engine. Oh, hello, Matt. He says, uh, are you using that Mod Podge as a sealer? Uh, I'm using it as like the first layer, essentially. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of putting it, trying to seal in all the, uh, all the, uh, the water putty. Um, because otherwise, you know, if like I bang it too hard, it's going to crack and like the, the, you know, it'll kind of come off in plates and settle and become like dust. Um, so it's good to like totally cover it in something so that it kind of makes it. So even if it does crack at this stage, it'll still stay on the model. Um, so that's kind of why I'm putting it on right now is just to seal up the water putty. Um, also it's kind of like a secondary layer of defense against against any sort of leak. So I'm going to spray flex seal all over all of this. And I think flex seal is going to attach to Mod Podge better than it would attach to water putty is my guess. Um, so I think that it's just going to be good to kind of have like a preliminary layer of sealant for the model. And then over that, put another layer that is the flex seal, which is really keeping the water out. I think two layers will really do the trick. Um, so that's the idea, but yeah, on its own, I'm not really using it as a sealant, but it's kind of part of the sealant. It's kind of one layer. Let's see. How is Wooden Railway OJ coming along, says Thomson Stepney. Pretty good. He's got the paddle wheels now, and they actually turn, and they're really cool. Um, so uh, that works really well. I haven't gotten past the, like, like I still, the, uh, the only major part I still need to make is, like, the funnel. And then I'll be able to, like, paint it and stuff. Haven't gotten to that yet. I haven't worked on it lately. But, um, you know, I intend to eventually. So... No real hurry, though, considering I'm kind of waiting on everybody else for uh, models now that I'm doing Tugs TWR. So I don't really need to hurry, OJ. I can kind of be slow about it because it's not like I have to build literally the rest of the Starfleet and Zed stacks. I can rely on others to help me with that because it's a team effort now. Let's see. When is the next character gallery, and do you know who it is? Uh, it says Braden C. Um, me and Matt have some ideas. Um... I, I'm guessing it will, it'll, they'll, they'll have, like last, I don't think we had one last month, did we? Um, hmm, I can't even recall. Um, but, you know, we'll definitely have one this month. I think the, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I can say anything without spoiling who it is. But like, you know, we, we have some ideas, some characters we're really excited about. Some ideas for who, what we would do with them. So, you know, we've been talking about it, but I've been so busy with the tug stuff that, um, you know, we haven't been, you know, planning character gallery as much. We're definitely keeping the show going. There's no doubt about that, but it's slowing a little bit lately because I've been starting up a lot of other stuff. Um, but that's how the show's always been. You know, it ebbs and flows. Sometimes we have tons of time to do it. Other times we don't have as much time. Um, but either way, you know, that show's going to go on forever. Uh, let's see. Who's this character you're building, Sam? Says Blue Tender Engine. <laughs> I love that you call me Sam, Matt, because it's you're the only person who does it where I think to myself, like, that feels natural. Because I wasn't Lemmy when I met you. Like, for those who don't know, Matt was my very first friend in the whole Thomas community. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll never forget, um, like, the, the first... You know, we, we had dozens of, uh, of calls and conversations and we talked back and forth in the comments. Um, we really got to talk more, Matt. Um, I, I don't know how much I told you about this Tugs TWR thing, but we got to talk about that. But you should you should check your uh, Twitter DMs because I did send you a DM. I don't think I said anything of note. I think I mainly just said, um, I, I just said like, hey, how you doing? But um, yeah, we should definitely talk more because, you know, uh, that would be that would be awesome. We haven't talked in a very long time, but yeah, Matt knew me before I was Lemmy, right? Because Lemmy was the name that came about when I joined the, uh, you know, the 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 Skype group that I joined, uh, the one that I'm in now. Basically, it's like it's changed a lot since then. Um, but at that time, there were a few different people in there. One of them was Lego Lover, and Lego Lover was the one who named me Lemmy, because you know everyone was just calling me Lemons, and then he was like, "Well, okay, you can call him Lemons if you want, but I'm going to call him Lemmy." Um, and, and it stuck and that's been my name ever since, 
but it's 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 interesting because a lot of people call me Sam these days. Like like someone will try to like be more personal because technically my name is out there, and they'll be like, "Oh, hey Sam," and it's like, "Look, pal, I never told you my name was Sam. It might have been in the credits of JBS or whatever, but like I'm Lemmy in the community, right?" But the one person I think I I like that makes sense to call me that is is Matt. Is uh you know is. I keep wanting to say XL5 fan is Blue Tender Engine, I suppose, these days. Um, because, you know, he knew me before the Lemmy days. Um, but anyway, we got to talk more, Matt, because, um, you know, I've got a lot of boat stuff to talk about for sure. Um, you know, him and I were like, he's the first person I ever bonded with on Tug's stuff. And Thomas, really, too, but especially Tug's. Um, anyway, let's see. My first friend in the Tugs, T, 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 that was too many T's, uh, that I just said, community was Lemmy, a.k.a. Master Lemons, a.k.a. Sam Webster, a.k.a. Clever Guy, says Floating Vessels Guy. Is it bad that I actually thought your real name was Lemmy, says Scottish Twin Productions? I don't think it's bad. I think it's, I think it's bad to beat somebody up. I think it's bad to go and uh, kick sand in somebody's face. I think it's bad to poison someone's sandwich, I think. I think all those things are bad. I don't think it's bad that you had a minor misunderstanding. I think that's perfectly acceptable. Um, but yeah, no, Lemmy's a made up name. The only other person who's ever had it is uh, the lead singer of Motorhead, who is uh, sadly departed. Um, not so sadly for me, because that means I get it all to myself. But anyway, um, you know, so yeah, it's it's a made up name, you know, but but it's very real to me. You know, I mean, I, 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 I see Lemmy as my name just as much as I see Sam as my name. Because the thing is, my family and a few friends call me Sam, but all pretty much all my other friends in the community call me Lemmy. So they're, they're both very real to me. Let's see. Floating Vessels guy says, I think Lemmy know my name. Do you know my name? I, no, I don't. I don't know your name apart from Floating Vessels guy. But um, you don't have to share it if you don't want to also. Let's see. Matt says, sorry that I haven't been responding to you on Twitter. Sort of left the community, a.k.a. moved other, oh, moved over to the Equestria Girls community making a series. That's really cool, actually, Matt. I was, I, I haven't, I, this is, you know, I, I've got a lot of My Little Pony stuff to talk to you about. Because I, like, I, like, I don't know if you've heard, but I've watched literally all nine seasons of My Little Pony the last the few months. I've literally been watching it with my sister, like, every night. We just finished it. And it's, like, really shockingly good. I haven't seen Equestria Girls. I know that's, that, that, like, that's your thing. Um, I'm sure that's really good as well, but I haven't seen it. Um, but My Little Pony is shockingly good. I am, like, I'm, I'm stunned by how much I like it. Um, I'm, I knew there must be something to it, because tons of Thomas fans are huge My Little Pony fans. But, like, Christ. Like, it's, yeah, 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 really. Yeah, Matt just said, uh, what really? <laughs> this has turned into a conversation between me and Matt. Um, but, but yeah, I have. It, oh, it's gone dark. Hold on. Am I still visible? Uh, ugh, put in my code. See, this is the trouble of doing it on a phone. There we go. All right. But yeah, no, I have. I mean, it's, it's really good. I'm, I'm shocked by how good it is. Um, I mean, I knew that there had to be a reason why, like, I finally get why Thomas fans and My Little Pony fans overlap so much. Like, it, it, the shows both have very strong character-driven writing. And not every show does. So I get why there's so much overlap there. It's really cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, we got to talk about that soon. Um, maybe our Tugs conversations will morph into My Little Pony conversations. Who knows? Um, but anyway, Matt, so we got to talk more. And I don't blame you at all for uh, not responding to messages either. I'm very guilty of that myself. You've put up with that from me a lot over the years. So, you know, don't sweat it, right? I know we'll be friends forever. I'm not concerned about a few lulls here and there. Um, but yeah, we should talk again soon because, um, you know, I do miss our conversations. Um, so anyway, uh, that's, that's, that's me and Matt's uh, one-off conversation in this uh, stream. I will, I will now reply to other people. Let's see. Floating Vessels guy says, I want to share my name. Um, yeah, if you want to, then go ahead. But, um, you know, it is, um, you don't want to be careful about it as well, because you can only share it once and then people know. 
Uh, let's see. Iron Horse Production says, working on a TWR tug. Very cool. Um, let's see. Um, I'm Nick, says Floating Vessels Guy. I Floating Vessels Guy is a mouthful. I'll say it if you want to, but would you prefer me to call you Nick? Because that is a lot um, quicker than Floating Vessels Guy. But I also said Lego Lover for years and years and years until he eventually started calling his name himself Garrett. So, you know, um, I can handle a long-winded name. Let's see. It's all about what makes you comfortable. Um, let's see. Thompson Stepney Production says, same, I am on my three one. Third one, I imagine that means. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Also working on Sea Rogue. Very cool as well. Yeah, I, I remember you uh, mentioned him in messages. Yeah. I, it's so cool to see, like, like Iron Horse, to see all your, like, all your models all in one place. There's something so exciting about that. Like, just to have, like, a whole, like, like, almost... It's not a studio, it's like a, just a regular table, but like it feels like a studio to have like all the models just all lined up and all in the same place. And I never get tired of seeing that myself. Like I've built enough now where like I have a ton in one place and it's just so cool. Um, it feels like you're actually at Shepperton. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. You can call me Malum, says Malum Beak. <laughs> I'm laughing, it's not, it has nothing to do with you. I'm laughing because of something else. Um, you know, but that's a good name, honestly. Um, let's see. I wonder how Sea Rogue lost an I-E, says Scottish Twin Productions, with an E-Y-E, -E, all caps. Um, I wonder as well. Um, I mean, he could have lost it at the munitions company. That would be kind of the obvious answer. Or it could be something else. Maybe he was just born with a defect. That's possible. Maybe he was just born without an I. Sometimes people are. That would be really, wouldn't that be like perfect for him? Such, so anticlimactic. It's like, oh yeah, they just forgot to put an eye in. <laughs> like, cause he's, it's like how he's like a pirate, but he's not. Like he, everyone thinks he's like the thief cause he has an eye patch. And it's like, no, I'm not. I have nothing to do with that. It's not my fault. Right? Like imagine if in the same, like it seems like Sea Rogue is all about outward appearances not matching who he actually is. So that could actually work. Um, I have 10 cent Zug. As uh, ten cent zip and now working on Zugs as Thomas and Stepney Productions. Very cool. Yes, call me by my name. Says Floating Vessels guy. All right, Nick. I will call you Nick. All right. So, I think we're getting pretty close here. Pretty close. not really like I can't really do anything else right now I just I just have to wait for it to dry essentially Whew. just gotta play the waiting game I guess I could like set up the camera outside but I may want to put a little bit more Mod Podge on this I mean it may not necessarily be done I don't even need to put a cap on this. It, I once left it out with the cap off for like, it must have been like 48 hours and it didn't dry out at all. It was totally unfazed. Like, what is this stuff? Anyway. So I think that's still going to need a bit more Mod Podge on it. There's some parts that I haven't put Mod Podge on yet. I should probably go around the bottom a little bit more. But um, yeah, i got to wait for it to dry. I wish I didn't have to wait. But what are you going to do? Let's see. What, what do you think? What do you think is underrated Tugs characters, says Thomas and Stepney Productions? I'm gonna say Big Mac because um, I, I heard I think it was that Dank Engine person on Twitter um, really made a really good sunshine the other day. I want to say it wouldn't railway sunshine that looked really cool, um, but they said that Big Mac 
they said it in a way where like they didn't have this opinion, but Big Mac is like not no one likes Big Mac. Big Mac is no one's favorite character. Um and Big Mac is probably like Zorin and Hercules to me are probably my favorite star in Zed, but like yeah, the thing is like even though I think Hercules is really cool and he's cooler to make and he's cooler to like he's very exciting to write stories about and stuff. I think I like Big Mac more. Like it's a weird thing. Like I think Big Mac is my favorite Tugs character in the sense that he's like I don't know, I respect him. You know, I like him. I I I think he's I have like a weird respect for Big Mac. Um and I think he's underrated, you know, because a lot of people are probably bored by him, don't see the, the draw, but I think he's great. Um, cause he's just so like, has such integrity. He's so like, you know, he's so down to earth. He's a hard worker. He's kind. He's just so hearty. You know, he's just got like, uh, you know, I love this one line, the way he says it. I think it's when the Coast Guard comes by with Zebedee and he's like, oh, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, caught a crook, salvaged by, by a crook. I don't remember what he says exactly. I think he's like, Marooned by a crook, something like he's like, like, oh, marooned by a crook, salvaged by a crook, that's all. And then Big Mac goes, <laughs> you'll survive it. Like, you know, he's just, he's in a good mood. He's like, ah, you'll survive it. Don't worry about it. You know, it's like, you can just, the way he talks matches his smile perfectly, right? He's just got this, like, really true, honest, sweet smile. I just love that, right? That's like so, like, he's such an honest guy, um, you know, so. I really like Big Mac for that reason. Like, in the same way that, like, my favorite Thomas character is Gordon, but, like, I relate to and respect Duck. That's a very different, you know, like, type of liking a character. Because Gordon's an asshole, right? No one, you know, no one should like Gordon, like, as a person. I mean, he's very admirable sometimes when it really, really counts. But, like, day to day, he's a jerk, right? He's kind of a bully. Um, whereas... You know, Duck is an admirable character, right? He tries to follow the rules. He cares profoundly about those around him, and he'll he'll risk, you know, himself to help those that he cares about, right? I mean, you know, who else would throw themselves in front of a train and risk their own life to stop it from crashing into, you know, a barber shop, right? You realize how dead the people in that barber shop would have been without Duck, like, you know, he, and probably a few other buildings in the town too. Um, and the fact too, you gotta love close shave because you realize Duck has just been cast out by all of these engines. They were just like, they were just like, you know, screw you, get out of our sheds. We hate you. We never want you to come back. Right. And this railway has totally just demeaned and humiliated and betrayed him. Right. And he's worked here a while at this point and they still turned on him. But the second that there's a runaway, he doesn't even think. He just immediately throws himself in front of the train. Like, no, of course, that's the right thing to do. I'm going to do the right thing. And so he goes and he stops the train, right? Risks his life for this railway. This railway that just cast him out. This rail, he would be totally justified in sitting back and just, there it goes. You know, that's, you know, he could totally do that. He didn't. And that makes him such an admirable character, right? Um, the fact that, you know, he would, he would put his own life in jeopardy for a railway that betrayed him, right? That shows he has real principle. And I love characters with principle like that. And I think Big Mac has that principle. Um, you know, whereas Hercules is definitely principled as well. He's a good person, but he's also very aloof. He's away half the time. You know, he's kind of not as involved in his friends' lives as maybe he should be. He's kind of constantly living the good life out at sea with these ocean liners when maybe he should be in port a little bit more. Maybe Ten Cents needs a good role model. Maybe Hercules could be helpful if he didn't constantly leave. He's like literally the only guy who scares Zorin and yet he's always missing. So Zorin can just, you know, mess with everybody. Like Hercules could be a better person. He's still great, but he could be a lot better. And Big Mac is around. Big Mac is constantly, you know, he, look at, like, Upriver, you know, he is that guiding force for Ten Cents and Sunshine. He is this, this generous, supremely kind person. Um, Hercules isn't quite that way. He's kind of aloof. And uh, so in that same way, even though Hercules is my favorite star, like, he's the coolest, I just love how big he is and how powerful he is and all that, Big Mac is the one I respect the most. Like, the one that I think is a really, really good person. And I admire that about him. 
And that's kind of, so those are two different ways to answer the favorite character question. And for me, it's like Gordon's my favorite, but Duck is the one that I admire and respect and can relate to and can say, yeah, I want, I want to strive to be like that. Because I don't want to strive to be like Hercules. I mean, Hercules is really cool and he's not a bad thing to strive for, but he's also more aloof than I would like to be. Um, you know, so that's, that's kind of the difference there. Um, but yeah, I'd say Big Mac is underrated. <sighs> Let's see. I wish we got an episode about Hercules, says Iron Horse Productions. I'm pretty sure we were going to. Um, that would be so cool. Um, he really deserves one. You know, like every franchise has their like kind of their big, exciting, cool characters that just have all the power, right? Um, you know, like Gordon is that in Thomas. The Flying Scotsman, to a degree, is also like that. Um, Hercules is that for Tugs, right? He's the badass that he walks into the room and nobody, you know, nobody can compete, right? And that, that's, there's something really cool about that, right? And the thing is, most of the time, like, might does not make right, right? So the reason Hercules or Gordon is not the main character is because they have all the power, right? You know, all they can do is punch down, pretty much. Um, you know, and, and Hercules, you know, doesn't do any punching, which is what makes him a good person. Despite the fact that he has the power, he doesn't use it to intimidate except when he really has to. Um, whereas Gordon intimidates constantly and so, of course, is not a great person. Um, but the main characters are always the little guy, Thomas or Ten Cents or Sunshine or Percy, you know, the guys who are on the bottom and who don't have all the power but do the right thing anyway. Because it's kind of easy for Gordon to do the right thing, for him to say, I'll come in and save the day. And then, you know, like, well, of course you can. You've got all the strength and speed in the world. You can do anything. But Thomas, for him to, to really exert himself and to rescue somebody, it's a lot harder. So that's what makes them more heroic characters. They apparently wrote one about him pulling two liners or something. Um, where did you hear that? I, I would really like to know, Iron Horse, where did you hear this? Because um, I'm pretty sure this is a rumor, and I have a feeling I accidentally started it. <laughs> um, hey, Lemmy, why are you so cool? Asks Nick. Um, I don't know if I am cool. Um, I am... I appreciate the compliment. Um, I try to be nice. Um, I can be grumpy and crotchety sometimes, but I try to be nice. I, I think you just have to be yourself, right? Even if you don't like who you are sometimes, you still be that person adamantly because it's all you got. And, uh, you know, if, if you don't like yourself, other people may. And even if they don't, well, that's what you are, so just be honest about it. Um, and most of the time you'll find that if you be yourself, you find out that's a pretty good person. Um, and most people like them even more than you do. Um, let's see. Bill and Ben were heroes in the episode. Well, heroes, <laughs> says Useful Engine 11. That's true. I mean, that's, that's true. They were. They were heroes. The episode did deliver. It, it promised me heroes, and I got heroes. This is drying. This is, this is drying. Good. Okay, I guess I guess we're not gonna have to have an enormous break because it's drying pretty quickly. I know Mod Podge dries fast, but I didn't expect it to dry this fast. That's good. <sighs> Glory. I'm putting all this time into the hole. I really don't want it to leak because then it will just like parts of it will just fold like um like with with blue nose, right? Like. You see kind of the, like, the lines along here, those kind of wrinkles? They didn't used to be there. I mean, they always have as long as you've seen him, but they, those are kind of a result of him getting some water damage. And so, you know, kind of the, the uh, Durham's water putty inside of there dissipated, and then the folds in the cardboard became visible again. Um, and so, for that reason... I really want to prevent water getting in because then this will keep the same pristine, beautiful shape that it has. Um, that's why I'm putting the extra layer of Mud Podge. I'm hoping that that will make a difference.
Don't be alarmed, I'm just licking my model. It's like what a cat does. So, you know, not for model making purposes. I'm just trying to go over a particularly noticeable crack in the body work. <sighs> There it is, right there. There's the boat. <laughs> Let me cats lick themselves, not models, says Scarlo with the old engine. Well, <laughs> you said cans, and then you said cars, and I know you mean cats. Speaking of Big Mac, what about his face masks? What about his face masks? They're really good. They're very good. I'm very glad we have them. Um, you know, that's that's nice. The fact that, and I guess when I say we have them, what I mean is the community's aware of where they are and can constantly see them. That's really good. Because um, a lot of them are uh, have been destroyed, supposedly. Um, which is a damn shame. Let me, do you like the Toyota AE86 Trueno? I have no idea what car that is. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what is, what is it that you don't like about your unfinished Big Mac model, says Bassingen? Um... Uh, mainly it's the shape of the hull, but also the, the head is too tall, um, and the eyes are too big and too far apart. Here, let me show you. So, the thing is, so first off, let me show you the problems with the hole. So, here's the thing. I've been, I've made over a hundred Tugs models, and I've been, I've made a lot of replicas. I'm working on a lot of replicas. I know these models very, very well, and I have very, very high standards for what I make for them. But I want to stress that if someone were to show me this that wasn't me, I would be over the moon. I'd think, wow, that's amazing. That's really, really, really good. Um, you know, so th I'm not saying this is a bad model. This is really, really, really good, right? But it's just not quite where I want it to be. And so, of course, I abandoned it and started one that would be where I wanted it to be. But this is still an amazing model. It's just that I can do better, and so I was more excited about the prospect of making a new one than working on this old one. Um, you know, so that being said, um, there's, so the curvature of, it's kind of hard to see, but the curvature of this, it kind of, you see how it just kind of slopes down almost like straight like this? Not nearly as curvy as, as it's supposed to be. It's like, it's kind of very sudden, and it kind of, it's kind of supposed to go flat back here at the stern underneath it for a while before it kind of starts sloping down. But on this model, it just kind of goes straight down like that. You see, like it's a very sharp cut. Compare that to this. Like it's a, it's a different shape, you know, it, it does look different. Um, you know, it kind of, it's, a, it's more nuanced, you know, than this. But also, um, there's the fact that, so the biggest thing about this is the shape of the deck, right? It pinches back here. It's supposed to kind of, like, say that this right here is fine. 
It's this that's the problem. The fact that it kind of, like the shape, it's supposed to curve out like this, but then it's kind of supposed to stay out and then curve suddenly at the back. The back is supposed to be a lot wider than it is here. Um, this kind of really curves and pinches in almost as much as it does at the front. And, you know, that kind of oval shape is not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be like this. You see the difference here? How it kind of, it's way wider at the back than the front. Like, that's a very different shape right there. Um, so that's the biggest thing that made me decide, you know what, I'm going to do this differently. But there's also the fact that my methods are very different now. So, for instance, I use different paint now. I don't, you know, I, I use, um, I do the splash rails slightly differently. I put water putty on and this one didn't have it. Um, I do the supports differently. You can see that inside of here, the supports have kind of bent and fractured a little bit. Um, and the ones I do now are a lot stronger. Um, I just do things very differently. And so... I wouldn't want to return to this model because my methods have evolved a lot. It's just this model is in the past. It's, you know, it's, it's old fashioned. Um, the whole as a, as a whole is a very flexy, like, and I don't really like that. You know, I want it to be nice and rigid and that's what the new ones are like. And then, so that's pretty much everything with the whole that bugs me. Um, but, well, and also the overall scale. And this is something I didn't even realize until I started the new one, um, is that the, the hole is a little big. I don't know what the show accurate one is, but this new one feels more accurate to the show for me. It's not quite as wide, and it's also not quite as long. It's a little bit smaller, because I always thought this was kind of big. And it is kind of big, it turns out. It's a little bit too big. It's, you know, it kind of bows out too much at the sides, just a little bit. Um, it also you know, it also is just kind of taller in general. It's, this thing is really big and beefy and it's not in the right ways. Whereas this one, you can't see it, but the one I'm working on is very big and beefy in all the right ways. So that's the difference. Um, but, you know, so it's a little bit smaller and I like that better. Um, but moving on to the head, the face is good, but you can see the eyes are a lot bigger than they're supposed to be. And there's supposed to be more space on the side of the head. Big Mac's eyes are supposed to be very kind of small and kind of further to the center almost. And then have like a ton of like flesh, I guess, in between the eye and the wheelhouse. You're supposed to have like a really big margin right there. And uh, he doesn't. You know, the eyes are really big on the one that I made. Also, in general, the face is very tall on this one. And it's really not supposed to be. The eyes are supposed to be a little bit smaller. And then the face is supposed to be a little bit more squat. You know, it's supposed to be shorter. Um, so that is kind of, that, those are all the things that I aim to change because, you know, you look at this and it's good, but it definitely doesn't fool me that it's the real thing. It does look pretty cool though. I mean, if you just look at it, like, like that, also the superstructure should probably be a little bit longer, maybe like it's a little bit far back. But yeah, you know, I mean, he's pretty cool. Let's see, what are people saying? Who else used to think Big Mac was a cool character in Tugs? I still think that. Let's see, Nick says, no offense, Lemmy, but it looks like an oversized switcher's hole. Yeah, no, it does. Like, it kind of, like, the way it pinches at the back is kind of the same way there is work. But it is way too wide to be a switcher's hole, of course. Um, not in terms of scale, but I mean in terms of like proportions. Like the switcher holes, of course, are very narrow. Um, but I know that you know that, Nick. Um, let's see. So, Sign Matthew says, I don't have good model making capabilities, but I'll definitely help when I can for the Tug series. I feel that I would do good with voice acting. Well, I have no doubt you could have good model making abilities if you decided to practice it, if it was something you were interested in. I, I believe anyone can make great models if they just kind of put the time in. Um, you know, but if you're not interested in that, then, um, you know, yeah, I mean, we'll definitely be bringing in a lot of voice actors. That'll be in the distant future, though. You know, like the, the, the voice acting part of the project. I mean, think about when you make a video, right, with voice actors. 
you film, you might, you make the models, you write the script, you film the thing, you put the music in, and then you go and cast voice actors. So like, it's at the very end of the process is when we're going to bring in voice actors. Um, you know, so it's going to be like, if I'm being, you know, totally, if I'm, if I'm kind of erring on the side of caution when I estimate, it's probably going to be about a year until we actually need voice actors. Right now, what we need are model makers. However, if you're not interested in making models, then by all means, uh, you know, just wait until the voice actor part. Because it'll fly by. This just looks so cool. Like, I just love the shape of this. It's like, this really is, I've pretty much nailed the shape. It's probably not perfect. I'm sure it's lacking some things, but like, this really, every angle I look at this from, I just think, that's right. You know, that's, that's exactly what I intended to do. Wow. I guess I'll just wait for the side to dry a little bit more. But, you know, I think I think I can probably. There's parts of the stern I haven't gone over yet. I think I can do that, even though it's not totally dry yet. Floating Vessels says, uh, gosh, Stern is a very tricky part to do. Yeah, it is, Nick. It's like, I, that may be the trickiest. Because um, everything else is a lot, you know, is a lot more, not more obvious, but it's more, uh, it's just not quite as complex. Because the Stern is literally, you go like, it's going, it's going like, like, uh, like say parallel to the water. Then it goes up, then it goes parallel again, but kind of not really, because then it's curving up, and then the splash rails start. And somehow you have to get that right from the side and from the back and from like every angle. It looks different from every angle, and that's the complicated part. Like, say, the, the bow is a lot easier because it's literally just bring it to a point and then kind of curve it at the bottom. But uh, the stern is a hard shape to make kind of got to do it in steps and slowly sculpt it until you get there. Let's see. Hey, Lemmy, how many models do you think you need for TWR tugs, says Neil Fan 18 Productions, Luke. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, probably, I, I'm guessing, I mean, like, if, if you, it depends on what you count as a model. Like, if each individual thing that a person makes counts as a model, probably like 300, 350. Because if that's counting literally every buoy, every dock side, every building, every, I mean, we're literally building everything, right? We're building all the background buildings. So that's gonna require a lot of model making. The vast majority of the models are not gonna be boats, right? They're gonna be buildings. Um, so that's, you know, that's really where we need to build a lot of stuff. Um, and I think total, when you think about all that together, it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of models, um, which is why we need an enormous model team. So, like, that's why I keep emphasizing that. It's like, you know, it's that is that is the focus here. That's the one thing that I really, really cannot do on my own. Um, everything else, like, if I needed to, if I needed to do all the voices, if I needed to do all the scripts, if I needed to do all that, I could do that all on my own. What I can't do on my own is the models. It's just literally too much work for one person. Um, you know, if I want to do it the way I'm doing it, right? A lot of other people could probably figure out other ways to do it where they reuse stuff from other ranges or they, you know, or, or they make the models even simpler or, you know, you could probably do a series on your own, but I just have very specific, like, kind of uh, requirements that I've put in place for what I want to accomplish. So because of that, if I'm going to do a series the way I want to do it, I can't do it alone. That's basically what I'm saying. Um, but that being said, you know, I, I don't want to do it all alone. Um, and I don't want to write all the scripts. I don't want to do all the voices. 
I want to bring in other people. I want to make it a team effort. I think that would be cool. And so, you know, but I could do those things on my own. Like, that's the thing. I could write all the scripts. It's not like I'm incapable of it. It's just that I, I want to share those things. But it's not that I want to share the model making. I do want to share it. But like, even if I didn't want to share it, it wouldn't matter because I have to. Like, I can't do it all alone. Let's see. Lemmy, the Toyota AE86 Trueno was built in 1985. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I was I was expecting it to be like a new thing. Huh. Yeah, I still don't know. That narrows it down a little bit, but not by, not by much. <sighs> the Sodor Caterpillar says, Yo, yo, who could, who should I make after Zip? Ten cents, Billy, Shoe Pack, or one of the barges? Um, I don't know. Maybe, uh, I mean, I don't know. If I were you, I, I'd choose ten cents. I think he'd be the fun one. Billy Shoepack basically is a barge. He's just got the paddle wheels on the sides. Let's see. Not been hearing much of you talking about cars, says Blue Tender Engine. Yeah, that's right, Matt. I mean, it's like, I, I, it doesn't come up much, you know, because it's like Thomas comes up a lot because, you know, this whole stream's about tugs. Um, but cars doesn't come up as much. Sometimes it does. Um, I haven't been, like, super into cars the last few years, I want to say. Like, not that I, like... I just, the thing is, like, it requires a big shift, you know, like, I'm focusing on Thomas and Tugs right now, those are my major projects, so in order to focus on cars, I kind of have to shift gears, right, and, um, you know, I just don't find the time to do that very often. At some point, I think I'm probably going to get really into cars again, and be into it for, like, three years, but um, that time hasn't come yet. The last, like, five or six years, I want to say, I've been just totally invested in Thomas. That's been really what I've been focusing on. Um, but I think at some point I'll get back into cars again. Um, but it might not be for a while, you know, because I've got all this tug stuff going. I've got a lot of cars ideas, though. I'd really love to make some cars, like a cars series. I have a lot of ideas about how I would do that. Um, but I think I need to prove, like, there's tons of projects that I really want to do, but I have to prove to myself I'm capable of them first like capable of them without quitting, right? Because I believe that I could make any project I wanted to as long as I wouldn't quit. Problem is I quit a lot, right? I, I work on a series for a while and then I quit and, I, and then I move on to something else. So I'm trying to kind of prove that I can do it. And that's part of what this Tugs TWR thing is, is to see, okay, can we actually accomplish this? Can we get it out? I've had no success the last four years or so trying to release a series. Um, and I'm wondering, well, maybe... The problem is that my ideas are too vast to do myself. You know, I, I, they're too, they're, they're too much goes into them, right? If I want to do a huge tug series with a bunch of different models, maybe the reason that I quit is because it's just too much work for me personally. Um, but if I were to bring in other people, maybe that would be totally feasible. And also I'd still be happy with the quality because I wouldn't have to sacrifice anything. So that's really the uh, the difference, um, and I think that if I if I if I have more people on board, I can I can make a series finally a reality. But it's uh, it's it's been a long time coming. Uh, let's see. So let me. Will you use original characters for your series like the one I showed you? Um. Yeah, we'll use some original characters. Um. Uh, yeah, were you the one who emailed me? Because that was that was really neat. 
I think you're the only one who's emailed me so far. Um, you know, and, and I want to encourage people, uh, master of the lemons at gmail.com. If you have a test photos of your test model to send, but you don't, you can't, or don't want to send them through Twitter, you could always send them through, uh, my email. Um, so you could always do that. Um, you know, if you just spam me there and just email me for unre things unrelated to Tugs TWR, you probably won't get a response. Um, you know, I'm, I'm putting out my semi-personal email just so that I can get, you know, open it up to people who don't have Twitter. Um, so, you know, um, that's, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not opening it up so that I can answer random people's, you know, uh, emails. I'm opening it up so that I can answer uh, Tugs TWR messages, um, you know, so, um, but yeah, uh, Neil fan that, um, you know, that was, that was really cool. Like, I, yeah, I love that model. And I love that, like, you, you clearly had like a, I, I haven't seen your response to it yet, actually. I don't, I don't know if you responded to my message or not. I haven't checked my email today or yesterday or whenever since then, but at any rate, um, yeah, that was really cool. And I think, um, you know, we will definitely bring in original characters, but I think that we are going to, um, um, we're going to be careful how many we bring in because I don't want to make, I don't want to make the whole port feel different by bringing in too many. Like, I don't, I think maybe one day we may add a new star tug or a new Z stack or something, but that'll, we'll have to build up to that. So I'm going to try to keep the main main cast very intact. But we will bring in new characters. We're already conceptualizing new characters, but they're more like Sea Road, Blue Nose tier characters, where they're like not major, but they're still maybe reoccurring. Um, you know, so I, I think we're definitely going to bring in originals. Uh, I've already got some cool ideas. Uh, let's see. Lemmy, the Toyota A AE86 Trueno, is also known from an anime called Initial D. What, what is this association between cars and anime? Like, that's what Jay keeps saying. is like he got into cars through anime. Like, are cars in anime a lot? <laughs> Let's see. Lemmy, if you make a large-scale Zack, how, how will make his face? He's got chapped lips, lol. Uh, so, what, what do you mean? Like, I'll just make, I'll just... I don't see what the question is. That's like saying, how are you going to make Big Mac's face? He has a nose. Like, exactly. So I'll make the nose. <laughs> like, I, I would just sculpt it the same way they did. And just, if, if he has lips that are chapped, like, I think I can remember. Here, let me check. Does this thing have power? No. It doesn't. But... Yeah, if he's got chapped lips, right? If he's got, like, the lines down the lips or something, I'll just carve them the same way that they did on the show. Just sculpt them. I mean, it's the same way as anything else. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Matt just joined the chat. Here are the Japanese train, Matt. And he says, I saw this tug in half. Um, Matt, clearly you've only been here for a few seconds and just saw the title. <laughs> um, but I'm glad to see you here. <laughs> Um, let's see. So who, what else is there? Movies and train studios. Any tips on making a wooden railway scale 10 cents, Lamy? Um, any tips? None that I haven't really given in, uh, in my seven hour tutorial. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 and I also have a, a document up on Twitter of, of like a drawing that has TWR scale measurements for the switchers, the river tugs and the harbor tugs, if you haven't seen it. Um, other than that, I would say, um, the things that I would say switchers are very narrow, you know, they're not like Harbor tugs where they're big and wide. They're very narrow little guys, um, kind of long and narrow. And I would say the things that kind of make or break a tugs model, I don't really think any of them are broken, but the things that kind of really define how good it is are the superstructure and the head and the proportions of them. You want to look out for proportions. So like, remember with the superstructure, um, there's a lot more space behind the superstructure on the deck than in front of it. Like the superstructure is a lot further forward, right? On most tugs. Hercules is the only example where it's far back, but most of them superstructure is pretty far forward. Also, you want to pay attention to the size of the head. Don't, you know, try not to make it too big or too small. Um, you know, like on 10 cents, it's, 
it's bigger than on a lot of tugs, but it's still relatively small. Like, it's not, you know, it's not too huge. Like, Blue Nose has a really huge head. Um, Ten cents really doesn't. So, those are, that's general advice. Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say just try to capture him and look at pictures and stuff, and, um, yeah. Oh, let's see. Let me, are there any capital letters in your email? No. It's, it's just lowercase masteroflemons at gmail.com. Also, I think all email addresses are lowercase. That may be mind-blowing, but I, th I think that is the case. Um, let's see. Lemmy, how will you make a tramper? Asks Ricardo T. Um, well, it depends on, depends on the, tr I mean, the, the principles are all the same, no matter what version you're doing, I guess. I, I just make it the same way I make a tugboat, except bigger. Um, pretty much. Proportions are a little bit different. It's longer. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would, the bigger it is, the thicker cardboard I would use. So, um, like say with this model, it is very sticky. So with this model, um, it is, um, yeah, I used kind of like shipping box material cardboard. On a tramp steamer, I might go as far as to like literally double thickness, like where I actually take like two layers of shipping box cardboard and layer them on top of each other. Because it would be so huge at that point, I feel like it might be a good idea to make the cardboard thicker. But you can't really get any thicker than a shipping box uh, without it being unworkable. Like a TP box would be cool, but that's so thick, it's almost not cardboard. Um, and you want it to be workable. So I guess I might, what I might do for a tramp steamer, if I were to make it in like show scale, is literally like do two layers of cardboard <laughs> to make it really, you know, huge. Hmm. Let's see. Dominic Z says, Lemmy, the Toyota AE86 Trueno was white and black in initial D. Um, I haven't seen initial D, so I doesn't narrow it down, but um, that sounds cool. White and black car. Lemmy, have you already done the flex seal, or are you getting up to that? So scroll over the old engine. I, I am, uh, I'm getting up to that. That's going to be the very last thing in the video. Like, I'd say the last 10 minutes of the video are going to be flex seal. Um, right now, I'm just putting layers of Mod Podge on the tug and oh that's that's almost dry right there on the side hmm. the stern is still very wet but um yeah not not bad also too i'm not so worried about like the splash rails because they're not going to get much splash. They're going to be up out of the water. What I really am worried about is everything below the water line. I'm thinking about on whatever, whoever this ends up being, I'm thinking about making the water lines on my new replicas uh, red below the water line. I think that would be really cool to like kind of do a trim like around where the water line is. Because I, like, I love seeing like the water line visibly when the model's out of the water, but you don't really see it on the tugs because it's all black. Well, I think from the water line down, I might make it red. I think that could give it a really cool kind of industrial look where it's like, it's actually got a purpose. Let's see. Sam, I can speak Russian, says Floating Vessels Guy. Well, I'm not Sam, I'm Lemmy, but, um, you know, that is, that is uh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not bilingual. I can only speak one language, and that is English. So, good on you. That's more impressive than most Americans. Let's see. Johnny Cuba had so much potential, says Neil Fan 18 Yeah, I think he still does, if you break him out. How, mu how much percent of the models are done? Says Lester the Flame. What does that mean, Lester the Flame? Um... How, what percentage of the models are done? Of what models? Of of the Tugs TWR models? You guys gotta specify. There's a lot of different models. Let's see. Lemmy, I own a Takara Tomy version of the Toyota AE86 in Chirena. You seem to quite like this car. Uh, that's cool. Um, let's see. Can you make a sketch of a Tramper? Says Ricardo T. I could. I'm not sure what purpose it would serve. 
Um, let's see. Overall, all your models. Okay, I see the question now, Lester. Um, like what percent out of all the models that I've started, which portion have I actually finished? Okay, that's a good question. I would say in my life in general, um, probably 80% of all Tugs models I've started, I've actually finished. Um, it's trickier for replicas because they take forever, right? So in theory, I could start a model and still finish it. Like, it's not like they've been written off. I can tell you, like, let me just go down replica list. Um, so I'm never going to finish Zorin, and I'm never going to finish Big Mac. I may um, return to the switcher hole I made for Zip, but... I, I don't know if I will, um, because I think there are some things about it I want to change. I don't think it's, I don't think it's perfect. I think it's still got some flaws that I would want to get rid of. Um, so yeah, I think, um, I don't know if I'll return to Zip. I definitely won't return to Big Mac and Zorin. And everyone else, Blue Nose is totally done 100%. Um, Hercules... I intend to finish this, whoever this is, Top Hat or Big Mac or whoever I intend to finish. And then the, um, I also intend to finish the other uh, Harbor Tug I started and turn that into someone as well. So overall, um, I guess the percentage of finished ones is one seventh, <laughs> but Zoran is pretty close to finished. There's just a few things that I never did on him, um, so he's not finished. Um, and Big Mac was like halfway, maybe sixty percent. So overall, that probably brings the percentage up to a little bit over a seventh, maybe like one point five out of seven. Um, but yeah, so maybe uh, like one point two three out of seven or something, some weird percentage, but yeah, so not a, not a high percentage of my replicas, but that's because it takes a lot of work to finish a replica and they take forever. Um, and also because, you know, the margin of error is so small because I'm making a replica. I'm trying to make something that, you know, could pass for the real thing. And, uh, it's, you know, very difficult to do. And, and you may realize halfway through the process that the model has a flaw that it's just easier to rebuild it. Huh. Lemmy, are you going to do Billy Shoe Pack? Says Aiden Animates. I imagine I'll have to one day. Um, I don't really like Billy. Like, I like his character. I And I think his design fits his character well. But, like, he's like a box. He's, like, boring, you know? And small. And everything I love about Tugs models... It, is like the opposite with Billy. He's boxy, he's small, he's uncomplicated, he's, there's barely anything below the water. Um, he doesn't even have like anything under the water line. He just floats on the surface, basically. Um, all the coolest parts of a tugboat to me are missing on him. So no, I have no interest in making a Billy. I may do that one day at some point, once I've made a lot of other models and I, you know, it'll be an interesting change, but not for the foreseeable future, for a very long time. I, maybe it's some in like 10 years, I'll make a Billy shoot back. Um, but yeah, no, he's, uh, he, I'm not interested in Billy. Let's see. I'm really thinking about doing the diesel tug, says the Sodor Caterpillar. How do you do the diesel? <laughs> I mean, I've got the diesel tug right here. You just paint it red and there you go. This is the diesel tug. Let's see. Lemmy, you are right. I like the car, says Dominic Z. I had, I had a feeling. Um, let's see. Okay, Lemmy, you don't like when I call you Sam? Well, no, because it's not my name, Nick. You know, it's, my name's Lemmy, right? I mean, it, I'm Sam to some people, right? But like, you know, it's like, it, it, like if I called my dad by his first name, like, you know, I, it's, it's just kind of weird, right? I, he's dad, right? That's what I call him. It's not like, you know, but that's not his name. You know, it's like, well, yeah, it is to me. And likewise, my name is Lemmy to you guys, right? To people in this community, I am Lemmy. And 
you know, I don't have any desire to change that, um, you know. And so it's like, it's, it's an indicator. Because the thing is, different people address you in different ways, treat you in different ways, respond to you in different ways. That's what it means to have friendships, is to have different things going on with different people, right? There are things I share with Train King James that I don't share with, with Matt, or, or that I don't share with other Matt, or that I don't share with Bailey, or that I don't share with, you know, Will Thomas, or whatever. Right. It's like, you know, it's it's different people address me in different ways. Um, and I think that's cool, you know. And so, like, say with uh, with, you know, Blue Tender Engine, um, you know, the fact that he calls me Sam is cool, not because I like being called Sam, but because I like being called Sam by him, because it indicates the history that we have together, the years that we spent, you know, as, as you know, close friends talking about Thomas and Tugs. And, you know, that's um that's really cool. You know, that it, it indicates that friendship. It reminds me of all those good times spent together. The fact that he still calls me Sam. It's a reminder that, hey, I've known you since 2015. You know, it's like, it's cool. Um, is it even earlier than that? I think it's 2015. I can't, I'd have to check the messages. But, um, but yeah, anyway. So, you know, I, I met you as Lemmy, you know, Nick. So for that reason, I prefer to, you know, remain Lemmy because uh, that's, what I'm called, you know, in this sphere, in these streams, I'm called, I mean, look, right, right here, you see that? That's, that's, that right there is, is the, um, is, is, just call, call me that. Uh, let's see, I mean, my name's Asher, and people call me Asher, but I'm fine if people call me Scarloe, but I do like being called Asher more, says so Scarloe, the old engine. Yeah, well, then people should call you Asher, right? I mean, it's, you know, if that's what you prefer, then, yeah, that's what they should call you. I think people should, you know, be able to choose what other people call them, right? You know, that's, it should be up to the individual what they're comfortable being called. Um, you know, like, I'm, I'm not, it doesn't upset me if someone calls me Sam, but it's a little weird. Um, unless, of course, they know me as Sam, unless I introduced myself as Sam to them. Um, you know, so it's kind of that, that distinction, right, is the important thing. Let's see. <laughs> Lester the Flame says, Lemmy, the best Thomas slash Tugs YouTuber, at least top 10. <laughs> I, well, thank you. But um, I'm hardly a YouTuber at all. <laughs> Don't, I barely make any videos. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a model maker. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's like, I'm not really a video person. I'd like to be. I'd like to make a series. I'd like to, you know, be doing, tell, actively telling stories and stuff. But, uh, I'm more of a personality. Uh, it's it's interesting. This is really cool. So let's see. I guess I should probably go over it again. Let's see. How much time do we have? I'm guessing. Let's see. I started this around one or something, so it's probably like two thirty now. Yeah, that'll work. If we spray it at like five. So I'm gonna paint another layer over this now. And that'll probably dry at like three. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Now we'll be done before five or bust. Well, get this train home or bust. Speaking of Edward and Gordon earlier, I'm writing a story for my series about the early days of the Northwestern with some elements of Dougie lore into my lord, says Malambeek. <laughs> Dougie would be so glad to hear that. <laughs> Dougie lore. I love that we just call it that. It's just Dougie lore. Like, that's an official term now. <laughs> they get such a kick out of that. <laughs> I love it. That's the first time, I think, that I actually had a stream with somebody where I didn't bring anyone else in and I also wasn't making any models. Like it was literally just me and them sitting for like four hours talking about Dougie lore. It's 
pretty good conversation, I gotta say. I think this will definitely be watertight. This, this is really good. So I'm like going over the um, the seam on you know where the keel meets the the hole, just because I feel like that is quite possibly going to be a weak point. You just want to think about where are leaks likely to form. They're probably not going to form along like large flat surfaces with no dents in them, because like like where is a leak gonna form? You know. How do I pick this up now? Like, a leak isn't going to form right here in the center, right? Or right here, right? It's going to form like along the seam, or it's going to form like along the splash rails. So those are the points you really want to make sure are watertight. You know, all the places that there could be imperfections, gaps, seams, nooks and crannies, the weak points. I just love Tugs and Thomas so much. Like, especially, like, you know, it's not, like, I love the entire Thomas series up until, like, JBS. I love everything prior to that. But, like, especially, like, the first five seasons. And I know that's, like, obvious, and everyone says that. But, like, I get the same magical feel off of the first five seasons that I get off of Tugs. It's interesting. It's like, there's this kind of, like, small collection of films and episodes that are, like, part of this just amazing, like, Shepperton bubble, right? And it's, like, the first five seasons of Thomas, Tugs, and then Magic Railroad. It's, like, those things, you know, those seven items together are that magical Shepperton bubble. Magic Railroad wasn't built at, you know, what wasn't done at Shepperton, but, you know, it, it's the same feeling, right? Um, and it's just, there's something so just wondrous about, about it. I, I just, I just, no other show does it. No other show captures that magic. Theodore kind of came close, but not even Theodore. It's like a cross between between what? It's like a cross between like the magic of like Winnie the Pooh and Star Wars. It's like that's like where it is. That's a weird thing to say. But that's kind of like what the feeling is, right? Star Wars had these amazing, super detailed models, um, you know, that were I, I don't know if if George Lucas has green screened them all out now or what. But I know what I grew up with. Star Wars had these amazing models. Um, I, I had the privilege to see a lot of them in person. Um, you know when they uh, when they did an exhibition here in California, um, and it was amazing um, seeing them up close. 
it, it was a big impact on me as like a fan of models and as a model maker it's just how like amazing these models were so detailed and weathered and and uh and just the, the the littlest details added that you wouldn't even see but they just the fact that they were there and might be caught on camera really sold the illusion and tugs and thomas were the same way but the main characters were the models in a way thomas and tugs are some of the only shows where the models are the stars right it's basically like if the special effects came to life that's essentially what thomas and tugs are they're literally the special effects coming to life right and so, you know, for that reason, it's just amazing. You know, I love it. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's beyond words. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Dominic Z says, Lemmy, can you search up the Toyota AE86 Trueno on Google? No, to do that, I would, I would need to put the entire stream on pause. I would need to install Google on my Safari-ridden iPhone. <laughs> um, I would then need to, uh, I, I would need to go and look for it. And then I need to come back. I'm not going to do all that. Um, my phone, I'm speaking to you through my phone right now. I don't really have a computer nearby. Um, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> But um, I'm sure it's a cool car. Let's see. <laughs> Do you know a film called Duel, Sam? Asks Blue Tender Engine. I don't. It sounds like it's about Duel. Uh, that's as much as I can tell. That sounds cool. I like duels, to be honest. I mean, not participating in them, but I, I like, I think the concept is really cool. Imagine if Gordon and Thomas got in a duel. <laughs> they finally just decided to decided to settle their settle the score once and for all. Ten paces, Thomas. Henry would be Gordon's second. Percy would be Thomas's second. They'd talk it over. So we both agree they shouldn't be doing this, right? Well, clearly, yeah, but I don't think Thomas is going to back down. I don't think Gordon will either. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Henry goes back to Gordon. Don't worry, Henry. I'll only aim for the shoulder. <laughs> and Percy goes back to Thomas. Don't worry, Percy. I'm aiming for the head. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But then they'd both chicken out. They'd be like, we're not doing it, never mind. But then Gordon would accidentally fire, and then they'd have to go to the emergency room. Because <laughs> Gordon would shoot himself in the foot. Or worse yet, he'd shoot Henry by mistake. <laughs> Just put all the engines as humans in the, uh, in the, the late 1700s. <laughs> Now keep in mind, I'm going to have to drill into this later um, to add the servo uh, for the rudder and to add the uh, propeller. And uh, why am I not doing that now? Because not everyone's going to want to do that. In fact, I think most people probably won't want to add those advanced features. And so I'd rather just kind of make that a separate part. Like further down the road, I'll just dig back into this and fix it. But for now, I think it's simpler to just kind of make the basic shape of the hole and do that later. Uh, let's see. The 
Dougie stream was fun and has given me some new ideas and has helped me to, to reconsider some things about my lore as well, says Malum B. That's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, they had some really like interesting ideas. Like, like a lot of like the lore was like, was like what you would expect, right? Like, oh, this happens this year, this happens that year. Be like, you know, oh, you know, the, the, but then there's like other stuff that was just totally out of left field. Like, you know, oh, by the way, uh, what, what was something in there? It's not so novel that I think they said Jim dies, right? But like the fact that, that they said it that way, like it just happens out of, out of the blue with no explanation. And the fact that it's on the checklist, right? Like, we don't think about that usually. We're like, oh, yeah, mid-sodor engines die all the time. Not a big deal. But this one, you're like, oh, yeah, no, it's a big deal. Um, there are other things in there, too. Oh, oh, I, I, one of the big ones was, like, they said, like, you know, oh, Thomas arrives, 1930 or something. And I was like, <laughs> I was not prepared for that. I know that Thomas's arrival was not mentioned earlier, but, like, so many engines have arrived already. Um you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like they weren't afraid to like, just like go for it and just change things. Um, I love that. Um, you know, and also, you know, also it drives me crazy at the same time, you know, cause I'm kind of a loyalist to a lot of, uh, the existing timeline, you know, between TV series and rail, mostly railway series timeline. Um, but I'm also glad that Dougie is not shackled by, uh, the un, uh, the irrational desire to make everything accurate to the timeline, even when you don't want it to be. So that's very good. Uh, let's see. Dominic Z says, Lemmy, the Toyota AE86 uh, Trueno is really fast, especially for a car that was built in 1985. How fast is it? Um, let's see. Carl Matthews 8 says, do you think it's weird that Thomas is older than Henry and Gordon? No, I don't. Um, it's a very interesting question for sure. Um, but I don't find it strange because they're steam engines, right? Like, like if they if you're like, say I'm writing some stories now that are humanized, um, you know, that, uh, I think are really interesting. Um, and you know, I'm trying to figure out how to like represent every character and, you know, like in that I instinctively made Thomas much younger than Gordon. Um, but that's because that's who they are as characters. You know, they're much, they're, they, they, Gordon behaves as the older one, but really what older means in railway terms is different because remember steam engines are rebuilt constantly, right? A steam engine has, you know, dozens of rebuilds in their life. Um, you know, if they're as old as Gordon or Thomas or, cause here's the thing, they're both in their hundreds now, right? So imagine, imagine this, I, imagine this scenario. Imagine that you are trying to fix this problem, right? You say, oh, Thomas is older than Gordon and Henry. I'm fixing that. All right. So Thomas is actually built in 1930. Let's use Dougie Lore, right? Thomas is built in 1930. Henry's built in, Henry should be younger than Gordon. So, okay, Gordon's built in 1921. Henry's built in 1924. James is built in 1928. And then Thomas is built in 1930. All right, there, that works out nicely. Thomas is a lot younger than Gordon. We can move along. But what happens when we get to the 60s, the 70s, the 90s, the 2020s? <laughs> At what point does it now become weird because ugh, Thomas is 100 years old? He can't be 100. He's not an old man. He's a child. That's disgusting. That's, you know, like, it'll break eventually, won't it? Right? Because they're not humans, they're engines, you know? eventually Thomas is going to have an age that is weird. That's just going to happen because he's a steam engine. So the problem is not that Thomas is older than Gordon. The problem is that we're looking at him like he's a human. Age doesn't mean the same thing when it comes to an engine. An engine rolls out of the factory being able to talk and form complete sentences and being and knowing a lot about the world already. They, they don't really have a child stage. Instead, their personality less than being defined by like their stage in life and their experiences, their personality is defined by like how they behave, how they're built, right? I mean, you know, Thomas is a, a small tank engine who is stuck in a, you know, a shunting yard and wants to see the world, right? So his whole big thing is, okay, I want to go and pull passengers. I want to go and run a branch line. I am sick of being in the same place all the time. That's where his motivation comes from. And it's not really because he's young it's because he just has been in the same place and he's been built for a job that is very restrictive. So naturally he feels restricted. 
Um, whereas Gordon, the reason that he's like big and proud and, you know, he, he really like feels like uh, superior to everybody. The reason he's looking down on everybody is because he does look down on everybody. He's bigger than everyone else. He's faster than everyone else. And he's put on all the most important trains. So, you know, it's kind of their personalities are formed around the circumstances that they are built into, really. And, um, and then they, they either react to those circumstances negatively or embrace them. Gordon embraces his and Thomas rejects his. And, um, you know, so that being said, that's really where the dynamic comes from, right? We view Thomas as younger than Gordon because he's less powerful, because he's smaller, because he uh, has been allowed to see less of the world than Gordon. Thomas is much less experienced than Gordon in most areas because he hasn't been allowed to pull the express. He hasn't been all over the island. Or if he has, he's been there to do shunting or to help construct the railway or that sort of thing, right? He's been doing jobs that are more restrictive. Um, but I would say that you can totally tell stories about Thomas existing long before Gordon, and they work just fine. And the reason is that, you know, Gordon, it, it's the fact that when Gordon comes along, he needs to be the, he needs, he needs to all of a sudden be ruling the roost, right? He needs to be, I don't want to say the king of the railway because that name's taken, but you know, that, that sort of thing, right? But he doesn't need to be there from the start to do it. Um, you know, like, um, I've been writing, like, these human stories I've been writing, right? Um, the, the line of thought I've gone with, if I were to humanize this, to kind of explain further how I look at Gordon and Thomas in terms of their age differences, I would say that, like, I could totally see it where, like, Thomas is, like, Edward is maybe, like, Thomas's mother, right? Imagine that. Um, the father isn't in the picture, and so Edward raises Thomas alone. Um, you know, and they keep on like that for years and years. They really struggle financially. And Thomas has to, you know, pick up jobs and stuff in order to, uh, to get by, to help support the family. Um, and the two of them together uh, are keeping the house running, just barely. Well, then eventually, Edward meets Gordon. And Gordon, you know, imagine if, imagine that. Imagine if, you know, Gordon and Edward became married, right? Let's just, let's just go through with that idea, right? Let's just see where that goes, right? So imagine if that happened, right? Because that's essentially what it is, is Gordon comes into the railway and he is not really wanted here by Thomas. Thomas does not like him at all, but he's also the biggest and the strongest and he can get everything afloat again, right? The railway is about to collapse. The railway is in jeopardy. The railway is about to, you know, about to go bankrupt. They need help. All of a sudden, Gresley Pacific, bring him in here, right? And Edward realizes that. Um, you know, and so if you bring Gordon in, um, then all of a sudden he can save the railway. He can save the household. He can help support them. It may not be the best marriage, so to speak, but it will be immensely valuable to the survival of the house, right? And so then Gordon is like this awkward stepdad where he, you know, he's the man of the house. He thinks that he's the best. He thinks that he can run things. But, you know, like Thomas in his head would be like, what the fuck? Like, I've been here the whole time. I've been running the house. Uh, what, what are you, you know, what are you doing here, right? It's that sort of thing. Um, and so that's how I feel about the early railway. Someone was talking about uh, three railway engines era, earlier than that era story, uh, earlier in the chat. And this is how I feel about it. I think Thomas would, re would resent Gordon because Gordon wasn't there during the early years of the railway. Thomas and Edward built this house together, right? They built this railway together. And, uh, and, and it wasn't easy and they struggled a lot, but they made it happen and they kept it alive until the present. And then Gordon comes in and basically says, don't worry, I have all the money, I have all the power, I can, I can help you too, you poor pathetic souls. And it's like, well, you know, like it, Thomas would resent that. Edward would understand that they're on the brink of bankruptcy and that they need his help. But Thomas would resent it, naturally, because that's Thomas's character. Um, you know, and that's kind of the angle I'm going with for the stories I'm writing right now. I've got some stuff on DeviantArt already that's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, it's like I'm, I'm, I was writing a story about James and Thomas today that was pretty neat. And uh, it, it goes with this concept of, like, Gordon parallels quite cleanly with, like, a kind of stepdad that comes in later that wasn't there from the beginning, but that is kind of there to help, but also is a little bit too overbearing. 
that's kind of what he is in the story of the Northwestern Railway. He wasn't there from the start. And that's a good thing, I think, for the story. It's cool that Thomas arrives much earlier than Gordon. Because imagine all the work that he puts in, and then all of a sudden Gordon comes along and ignores all of it and helps the whole railway, and, and through his immense strength and speed, all of a sudden, you know, things are easy again. Um, you know, it would be very frustrating. So I see that being a big reason why there's resentment between the two of them. Because Thomas has been here longer than Gordon, but Gordon has more experience than Thomas. So even though Thomas has more rights to be proud of the railway, Gordon has more to offer to the railway. And that is where the tension is. And that's why those two will always be at odds with each other, even if they you know, do make up largely in Gordon the Big Engine. Um, let's see. Any more questions from folks? Let's see. Dominic Z says, drives over 150 miles per hour. Well then, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that sounds like a lot from the 80s. Isn't it sad that most cars can go faster than the fastest steam engine? That's pretty, uh, pretty pathetic. Like Im imagine Mallard was trying to break her own record and then like a modern car just like zipped past her. <laughs> that would be so sad. Hey, Lemmy, will you make T to R Thomas tutorials, TWR Thomas tutorials, like how you made Percy and Bear, says Scarlo with the old engine. I really want to do like an engine tutorial, but uh, considering how long it took just for me to do a tutorial at all, um, probably won't be for a very long time. Um, I'm hoping some of the stuff from the Tugs tutorial is transferable to engines. Can I just say that Stanley is a perfect parallel of Thomas, says Spacey Boy. That's, that's, they parallel very nicely because Thomas can be very petty, very competitive. Stanley on the opposite end is not really competitive at all, very friendly. And he's just the guy that kind of everybody loves. Like, they're just like, oh, what a great guy, right? He just doesn't have, he doesn't have a temper doesn't have a temper. He can just sit there and just take what you're saying out of him. Thomas would finally snap in The Great Discovery. Imagine a scene where he's just like, and that's another thing, Stanley. You're, you're trying to take my branch line away from me and, 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 you're, and you're trying to steal all my friends from me. And, and he'd, he'd go on for like 30 minutes, right? And Stanley would just be like, mm-hmm, 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 I see. And uh, how, do you, how do you feel about that? And like, he, he basically turned it into like a therapy session, right? Without Thomas even realizing. And then by the end, and Thomas is like, that's another thing, you're really good to talk to. Why am I crying? I don't, wait, is this therapy? And like, he wouldn't realize until the end, right? Wouldn't that be so good? Um, you know, I, yes, I love Thomas and Stanley. Those two are great. Let's see. I drew a concept for a, for a TWR scale diesel tug based off the original production concept. And now I don't feel like making him anymore. No, <laughs> says the Sodor Caterpillar. That's interesting. Why is, and the face is, how do you do it? It's like, it's like, it's, a, it's the line, right? Um, well, that's unfortunate, but also not. I mean, I mean, you, I, I don't know. I mean, if you, if you, enjoy drawing the drawing, then that's what, that's what counts. Let's see. Hey, Lemmy, will Old Rusty be in your Tug series, says Neil Fan. Probably, yeah, if we can find a good place for him. It, it's difficult with him, though, because it's very restrictive. Like, he's stuck in one place, so we'd kind of have to, like, we'd have to get Tugs over to him in order to involve him in the series. The way I write James is that he secretly gets along with tank engines like Thomas and Percy, but whenever Gordon or Henry are present, he puts up a front and tries to act like them, says Carl Matthews. Yeah, that's how I write him as well. I, I wrote a story around Halloween time that was really good, that kind of played with this idea. I only got halfway through it, but it was, it was pretty good. It was a pretty funny story. Let's see. Jesus, fuck you, Lester, says Floating Vessels Guy. Why, what did he say, Nick? Float, this floating, this floating guy really is weird, says Lester. All right. Um, I don't think a fuck you is in order. That's a little vicious. Um, but, um, yeah, it's not a nice thing to say. 
It's just not. <laughs> like, why, Lester? I mean, I, I, I don't understand people's... Like, why call somebody weird? Like, what good can that do? Not any good, really. Let's see. Lemmy, can I speak in Latvian or Russian with you? I, you can, Nick, but I will not understand it. <laughs> um, I only know English. Is C Rogue gonna appear in Tug's TWR? Asks Military Tank Studios. Uh, yeah, definitely. I C Rogue's one of my favorite characters, so I think he'll he'll definitely appear. I think he's. I've got some ideas for him. Lemmy, are you gonna make anything for TWR Tugs? I yeah, Neil. I imagine I'm gonna make most of it. Um, you know, because I don't have to ship it anywhere. So I imagine I'll make a lot of the things that everybody else struggles with. So like, it's either things that are hard to ship. Or things that, um, like, the, because they're too big, or things that um, are complicated, right? Like, I imagine, you know, there are some models that would be very intricate that I think, you know, people would want me to handle. Like, that's kind of why it's good that I did Top Hat and OJ, because Top Hat has the head thing, and OJ um, has the paddle wheels. The Sodor Caterpillar says, the absolute pain I'm about to go through making Zip's slanted fedora. <laughs> I understand that feeling. It's actually not too hard, though, when you think about it. You've got to, like, um, you've just got to kind of envision, look at the head, and then en envision how it's going to, like, cut. Yeah, it's hard to describe. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Or you're sliding it over the head, which is interesting. You could do that as well. It's just dawning on me how close I am to spraying this. It's really cool. Like soon I'll be able to put it in water. How do you make hats for tugs, says Lester the Flame. Um... Hmm. Let's see. First, I want to see if the rudeness earlier um, has stopped, Lester. Uh, how, how about this? I'll answer the question if you apologize to uh, Floating Vessels. And Floating Vessels, apologize to him for the fuck you as well, because that is a little too harsh, you know? Just because somebody throws hate at you doesn't mean you throw hate back at them. Um... People asking questions about how to make thing are so clearly not Lemmy fans. I don't agree, Saul. I think they're bigger fans because the fact that they're asking knows that they know I'll answer those questions. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I have made tutorials uh, that answer these questions. However, you know, it still might, it's, it's, admittedly a lot of material so it's hard to like comb through all of that right i mean we are in a tutorial right now you realize that <laughs> this entire conversation is taking place inside of a tutorial that somebody's going to watch at some point like this this replica like every every tutorial i do would be like the seven hour tutorial if i had the energy to actually make them all that way. Um, but I just don't. I mean, it's just too much work. You know, because that's the shortest I can make it is seven hours. And it took like three weeks straight of work to make it happen. So, you know, for that reason, that's why I'm doing this. You know, these live streams are clunky and there's like, it's like the library of Babel. There's so much information in here. Um, that you have to sift through, but, you know, at the same time, 
it is um it is something right the information is out there and a few people have been daring enough to actually sit through and make models based on these videos um you know so it'll be out there right that's what's important Let's see. Nick says, I love David Mitten because he really loved Thomas and Tugs, but for the new Thomas crew, it's like, it's their work. They got, they got to work, make animation, go home, but David was loving his work. Yeah, I don't know if we can know that for sure. I mean, clearly David loved it, but I think the rest of the crew, a lot of those people loved it too. It really depends. Um, I, I think some people did, some people didn't. And I think there are some names that we don't even know who really love their jobs, but just we don't have interviews with them. So that's really the thing. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, Lester says uh, floating vessels. And Lester says, sorry, floating guy. <laughs> that's good to hear, guys. All right, let's see. So the question I believe Lester asked was, uh, how do you make hats? Um... It's kind of like just you make a shape that well it depends on the hat if it's like top hats hat then it's like a, it's it's you basically make like a box essentially with a curve at the front and put that down on like a flat you know you make the brim cut out the brim and then put like the hat down on that but most hats are kind of a curvy shape so for those i would say make them out of clay or maybe aluminum foil something you can kind of mold and shape um the important thing, though, is that you make the brim very defined compared to the rest of the hat. That's really what sells it. Let's see. Let me thank you. Uh, let me thanks to you. I can finally make models. I'm so glad I have a lot of cardboard. Says Neil Fan 18 Productions. That is great. I'm 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 so glad to hear that. That's like exactly what it's for. So thank you um, for uh, for using my tutorial. I mean, that's exactly you know. That, that's the whole point of all of this, right? That's why you know, I, I sat down, made a seven hour tutorial, do these things as well. And it, you know, it's, it's a lot of time that I put into this. Um, so I think anyone who actually goes through and uses the things, uh, because you know, it's, it, it validates the work that goes into it. Um, and you know, I just hope that it's encouraging people to be creative because that's the whole point of it. Um, let's see. Solomon says, I never ask Lemmy anything I know, everything about him. I know the, how, how the diluted, the blood in his veins is. I can sense it, Sam. It's so thin. You, you healthy fuck, take a vitamin. Okay. <laughs> I take vitamins, Saul. I do. I do. Uh, let's see. Juan Gon Driver says, also, Dominic, when you say the 86 can go 150, do you mean at stock? <laughs> the conversation's happening. Let's see. I'm going to make a whole fleet of tugs and all thanks to Lemmy, says Neil. Well, it's mainly thanks to yourself for putting in the, putting in the effort. That's really the difficult part. Um, but I'm so glad I could help. <sighs> at parts of this, we've had 30 people. That's nuts. My streams didn't get, used to get that many. Is my audience growing ever so slightly? What's the worst picture from all of Tugs? <laughs> I know what my answer would be. You know that one picture of Zorin in... It's either Sunshine or High Winds. Um, 
it's the one where he's like, it's all the Zed stacks facing the right. Um, they're at the zero dock. It goes Zebedee, Zorin, and then like Zug and Zip, I think. And Zorin is like tipped over to the like the left. He's like leaning on Zebedee. It's really upsetting to look at. He looks dead. <laughs> I don't like it. Just going over the whole, like, everything kind of below the waterline with another layer. I think uh, I'm really trying to go over the uh, the rudder as much as I can because I feel like that's definitely a weak point. This, this is what you learn. Like, and there's the best way to learn is not even to listen to me. It's to just go and do it yourself. Like, because you might find a way to do it. It's better than my way. And, you know, there's some things I can't show you. Like, I can't really show you the trial and error of it. I can show you my errors, but I, I don't know what your errors are going to be. You know, and so the only way, like, if you're trying to make the model float, you just got to throw it in the water and see. And uh, it might destroy it. But 
doesn't matter because you can make more. That's the whole point, right? I'm not worried about my models being destroyed. You know, if I were destroyed, that would be a problem. But if my models were destroyed, I can make more. You know, I could lose everything, my tools, everything I've ever built, my entire collection, everything, right? Nothing but the shirt on my back. But I eventually I could just build more of them because, you know, all the most valuable assets are in here, right? They're not, you know, it's not what I've built so far. Blue Nose is really cool, but I could build them again, you know, probably better than the last one. So like if I, if he was destroyed by me floating him, I wouldn't really be that concerned. Um, and, you know, for anybody who says, oh my God, no, I can't imagine Blue Nose being destroyed. Well, that sounds like the words of somebody who, who feels like it can't be replaced, right? Like, um, because Blue Nose can be replaced, right? I mean, he's, he's, you know, I'm going to take good care of him. But if there was an enormous house fire, say, and then, you know, everything were destroyed, um, I wouldn't be too upset because I know that I could just start from scratch, right? And I like building the models and I could always build them over again. Um, and that's kind of, I think, the way to look at it is like the valuable thing is the skills that you gain along the way. It's not even the models themselves, um, you know. So that's how I've always looked at it. You know, because if you can build the models yourself, that gives you all the power. You know, you're no longer thinking, you know, oh my God, I really hope the Star Tugs Trust treats the models well. You still hope that, you still think that, but not nearly as much. Cause you know, like say, I, I feel like we could do it all over again. You know, I know we could, I know that if, you know, if the Tugs models were all destroyed, I know we could build new ones, better ones even. You know, we could do a whole series again if we wanted to, everybody working together. You know, I firmly believe that. I think this is the last coat. I think after this, I'm just going to wait for it to dry. I keep saying that, but like, I just want to make sure that I, I really kind of get it all as sealed as I can. And like, also on Blue Nose, the splash rails did not receive any water damage, you know, for obvious reasons. When I put them in the water, you know, the sides did, you know, distort just slightly, but the splash rails didn't. And so, you know, if those weren't affected, then these really aren't going to be affected. So I've only gone over the splash rails with one coat, but I think that's really all that they need. They don't really even need that. You know, I just put the flex seal right over the, you know, just the, the putty itself on Blue Nose, and that worked fine. So, <sighs> I really wish there was a cheap way to cast these because, you know, I wouldn't be against that, honestly. 
what I'm against is doing this and making it ridiculously expensive and inaccessible, right? I mean, I want it to be something that everybody can kind of do. You know, Flex Seal is expensive, Mod Podge is expensive, but they're not crazy expensive. They're not like hundreds of dollars expensive. You know, everything we've done so far, counting the Flex Sealing we're probably gonna do today and before the next video, probably gonna be about $40, I wanna say you know, max. That's not insane. But like Blue Nose, I spent pretty much exactly $100 on. Now, I believe that uh, $60 of that was the electronics. So that makes sense. You know, and a lot of people don't want to do electronics. A lot of people, you know, will forego that step. And so really, it's not that expensive. It's still a lot of money, but not as much as it could be. Okay, let's see. I feel like the young, the most youngest person in this stream. Um, maybe you are, or maybe you're not. I, I'm constantly shocked by how old people are. You know, sometimes like somebody who talks like a 25 year old is really like 16. Um, and sometimes, you know, I mean, it, like it's it's nuts. You know, sometimes you'll be surprised. Sometimes people are young at heart. Sometimes they don't sound their age, you know, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you sound young, then there's nothing, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. And if you are young, I wouldn't worry about it. Well, I would be careful on the internet. Let's see. Lester says, floating vessel guy, you make actual models. I just make these small things I can easily break. I'm not even going to call them modeling. Well, that's sad. I'm sure you can do, um, I'm sure you can, I'm sure your models are fine, Lester. Definitely better than what I started out with. I know, it's not hard to beat what I started with. I don't think you guys have seen what I made years ago, but it's, they were, they, those models didn't even stand up on their own. Plus, just because something easily breaks does not mean that it is poor quality. It might just mean it's fragile. Look at all these guys. They're all, they're all supporting floating vessels. Yeah, I would say what everyone else is saying, Nick. Um, you know, you're great. So, you know, don't, I mean, I know that me saying that cannot change the way you feel about yourself. Only that has to happen internally inside of yourself. You have to search in deep and think, why do I feel that way about myself? But know that everybody else likes you. Right. And that's the hard part is, uh, you know, because you can't control what other people think of you. So if they like you, well, that's good. You know, I mean, that means that the only thing you have to settle is, you know, your demons with yourself. Um, you know, yeah, a lot of people have self-worth issues. You know, everyone wants to be liked. A lot of the time, you know, most people are liked, you know? There's not a lot of people who are disliked by most people they encounter. But it's about liking yourself. A lot of people struggle with that. A lot of people struggle to like themselves. I've struggled with that on many occasions. Not even occasions, sometimes for whole years, right? Um, I, I get that. I think the first step to liking yourself is to figure out what you don't like about yourself and then figure out, well, okay, is that something that I actually value, right? Say you don't like yourself because, um, I don't know. Say, say you don't like yourself because you're socially awkward or something, right? Say that somebody had that problem. Well, you know, you have to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Say, okay, well, if I encountered a socially awkward person, would I dislike them? No, that would be mean. <laughs> like, instead, you'd, you know, you'd see the good in them. So if you'd see the good in them, why wouldn't you see the good in yourself, right? It's that sort of thing. Um, you know, I don't know. So it's, it's a question that someone else can't answer for you. You know, if you want to feel good about yourself, then you have got to look inside yourself. You've got to really think. You've got to really kind of soul search and maybe you'll figure it out. Or maybe, you know, the best thing is to talk to like a professional, a therapist or something. Because, uh, 
you know, you don't try to fix your own car. Maybe you do if you're a mechanic, but you know, you, you don't really try to fix your own car. You take it into the shop. Um, same thing with your brain. You know, I don't know how my own brain works. It's kind of like everyone should go to therapy. Um, I haven't in a very long time, but you know, it's, it's still a good idea. Difficult during COVID, but you know, there's places you can call into. Long Gone Driver says, seriously, bro, you can do so much more that uh, so much, so many others can't uh, to floating vessels. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you've literally made a better switcher hole than I have. That's very, I'm sounding vain, but I am one of the best. So, you know, I mean, that is incredibly impressive, right? If you've impressed me, then, you know, that's, that's, that's something, right? I mean, you know, that's, you're better than me at that. That's, that's amazing. Um, but beyond that, just personality wise, you know, you're very kind and that is an incredibly important, uh, thing for, you know, to, for a person to have is kindness. Um, a lot of people aren't kind. A lot of people take the easy route and bully instead. Um, you know, everyone wants to feel big. Everyone wants to feel like, you know, they're that, like they matter in this world. And some people do it by exerting their dominance over other people. And, you know, when they do that, you know, all they're really saying is, I'm small and I don't want to feel small anymore. So I'm going to hurt this other person and then I'll feel big. Um, you know, well, it doesn't work. And, you know, that's, and, and, and you got to look out for the people who don't do that, the people who are kind, the people who, instead of, you know, instead of making others feel bad to build themselves up, like Gordon or Henry and James, you know, you look for the people who don't, like, like Edward, right? And, um, you know, you're certainly nothing like Gordon Henry and James. You're kind, and that kindness is incredibly valuable in this world. So, you know, that's what I would focus on. It's easy to be rude, but it's hard to be good. That's why being good is the most important thing to be. You learn more and teach more with it, says Bongon Driver. Yeah, Jay, I agree. Um, yeah. It's easy to be cruel. Because it doesn't really require looking at yourself as much. It's very cold inside this hole. It's very cold inside this hole. It took some brain to save that train. <laughs> Look at that. Now I just gotta wait for that to dry. It's probably gonna be like 30 minutes. hole is upside down it reminds me of the Duchess class I am not sure why so uh, I think that was Wong Gong driver yeah <laughs> it does doesn't it well because it's got like that shape to it you know it's like got the I, I, the duchesses are probably the most I don't they're my least favorite streamlined designs I think um not very elegant they're just kind of like a like a you know that's it like they're wearing a big helmet. <laughs> Right, Lemmy, little car lesson for you. Uh, when you say the 86, don't say the number 86. Yeah, got to go 86. Say the numbers separate, otherwise we gotta have a problem. <laughs> Hold on a minute, let me think about this. Right, Lemmy, what? Little car lesson for you. When you say 
the 86. Don't say the number 86. You gotta go 86. Say the number separate. The 86. Okay. Okay. Well, in what context? When I say, when you say the 86. The 86 what? The 86. You're gonna have to elaborate. Like the like as in the year or as in like the numbers in the car name. Thank you guys for supporting, says Floating Vessels. Yes, that's very good of all of you. And um, and you're very welcome, uh, Nick. I mean, that's, you know, you're well deserving of that support. Uh, let's see. No, no, just the 8-6. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. The 8-6 and what, Jay, is my question. The 86, like the car name, like the, the one from the anime, is that the one? I wonder what the delay is on this. If it's like, um, if it's like, uh, 40 seconds or something. This is the waiting time. Hey, while we're waiting, does anybody know who like the like anybody know any like people who predominantly do like human Thomas stuff, like drawings and writing and stuff? Cause like I don't really know. I, I'd like to talk to some people who like that's their main thing, right? Because I've been getting in, really into that recently. Um like, I imagine a lot of those people are, like, exclusively on DeviantArt. Like, I don't see that side of Twitter a lot. Every now and then I see, like, a really cool humanized drawing, but not super often. I also don't check Twitter a lot. I don't look through my feed. Maybe I'd see it if I didn't. But um, anyone know anyone on Twitter who's, like, you know, really into humanized drawing? Like, that's, the, like, their main thing? Because I'd like to talk to some of those people. I think that'd be cool. Kind of swap ideas. I know Sleepy Henry, but that's pretty much the only person I can think of. Um, there's got to be, like, a lot more. <laughs> let's see. Blue Tender Engine Initial D. Uh, let's see. There's a conversation here that I am... Let's see. I think the car is referring to that one from my favorite meme, <laughs> says Matt. What are the odds? Yes, the one from the anime. Uh, none of this A.E. AE86 or Toyota AE86, just 86. Oh, all right, the 86. All right, I see what you're saying. All right, the 86. <laughs> but most people aren't car people, Jay. They're not going to know what I'm saying. If I say, oh, yeah, the 86, I know what you're talking about. It's like, come on, I'll do that for the A3 or the A1 or the, or the E2 or the K2. Or the 28. I won't, I won't even do it with... I'll have to say class 28 when it's a number. But, um... Yeah. That's only when it's relevant, though. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Floating Vessels guy says, Lemmy, did you know that my 10 cents hole drowned? It was laying in water for four days. Now it's trash. I'm very creeped out that I won't make another good hole. Make trash. Let me help. Of course you'll make another good hole. You did. A, you already already did. <laughs> like just make another one. It's not a big deal. Like I mean, like here's the thing, Nick. Yeah, you, know, you have this. It's in here again. What I said earlier. It's in here. Like the hole is a physical object. It's just a thing that you made. You can make another one, and you can make it just as good. I mean that's just how it works you develop the skills you develop the tools you can you know so yeah of course it's going to be as good maybe it'll be like not quite as good maybe it'll be like 90 percent okay big deal it's still going to be amazing and then you know uh, you'll work back up to it my point is like just keep making models don't worry about whether the current one is as good as the last one that's not the point the point is do you enjoy making it so enjoy making it and don't stress about whether it's as good but it will be as good because you understand the shape. 
Um, you know, but anyway. Um, so yeah, but but also why why did you leave it in water for four days? I've never put blue nose in water for more than twenty minutes. <laughs> like four days? Jesus Christ. Why? <laughs> And God rest his soul. He was a prototype, though, so it's okay. Gave his gave his soul for the cause. I mean, my friend Benji does humanize Thomas, but tug and tugs, but uh, we don't talk about those drawings. Why not? <laughs> Sounds really cool, Benji. Uh, let's see. Unless they're like sexual in some way, but even then, that's still art. Like. I making art is really difficult. Like not even I'm not even talking technically, I'm talking socially. It's very hard to make art, to actually like make something and put it out there. Incredibly difficult. I still struggle immensely with it, you know, and I've made a lot of art in my day. And uh, you know, so I have immense respect for anyone who draws, models, does anything whatsoever. I don't care if it is a drawing of of uh Gordon making out as a human with the RMS Olympic. <laughs> I don't care what it is, all right? As long as it's a thing that a person went out of their way and made, that's beautiful. The fact that somebody would put that much effort into it, that's beautiful. So there's no such thing as art that is to be ashamed of, uh, certainly. And I would like to talk about all types of art. Um, now, I have to be careful because uh, there's some art in this community that while I have absolutely no problem with it, uh, I understand that it would not be appropriate to talk about in a stream that has a lot of children in it. Because, I mean, that, there's a lot of kids here. That's just the fact, you know, and I want to make sure that I don't expose them to anything their parents would not agree with. Um, however, I don't have any problem with any art in this entire community. Any of it. Literally none of it. Except if it's like except if it's like a bunch of swastikas or something, then obviously that's a problem. But like beyond that, right? If it's not evil, then yeah, of course, I have no problem with it. Um, you know, anyway, this Benji person, that could be a, that could be an avenue. Let's see. His drawings have scar, me for life, have scar. Not, um, well, I, to each their own. Let's see. Sometimes I get scared about showing off customs, says Neil Fan 18. Yeah, I totally understand that. You know, I like I feel the same way, right? I'm I'm terrified of people judging my work. Um, but the best way to overcome that, I feel, is to is to prepare yourself for a negative reaction and then just put it out there regardless, right? Even if everybody hated it, you still gotta put it out there. Now, of course, that's not gonna happen. Right. People are going to be positive. People are going to see it and think, wow, that's amazing. I wish I could draw that. I wish I could build that. I wish I could make that music. I wish I could write that story. That's what people are going to say. Right. I mean, you know, they're going to they're, they're going to be excited to see anything that's been created, because here's the thing as an artist, when you spend hours and hours and hours working on the same thing, you know, every little imperfection, you can see every problem and you have a lot of time invested in it, right? You've been working on something for weeks, months, that better pay off, right? Because if it doesn't, then, you know, it's going to be, it's, you have wasted that time essentially, right? That's what you're thinking in your head before you release something. But here's the thing, you put in that time, so you have that high expectation. You know who didn't put in that time? The audience, the viewer, the people who are going to see your model. They didn't put in the time, to them, it's free. It's just a free image. It's, oh my God, this new tugboat that somebody made. That's cool. That's better for me to see than not see. Because they don't have to pay for it. They don't have to actually, you know, sacrifice anything to see the boat that you just made, right? So to them, their standards are a lot lower than yours. Because your standards are, oh, I have to justify these months of time that I put in. Um, but, you know, to that person, it's just a cool boat, right? They, they don't have to pay anything to see it. So you know, the standards are a lot lower. So that's what you got to remember about art, right? Is that, you know, it's, you're always going to be more critical of it than the people around you. And that's not you being crazy. That's totally logical because you know what it took to make. They don't. And that's the difference, right? So for that reason, you know, they, like, that's just a natural reaction. You're going to get nervous about it. 
but you just got to put stuff out there. You just got to be honest. You just got to, you know, you got to, you got to show people stuff. You got to not be afraid to show stuff off. Um, you know, I mean, you, you, of, of course you're going to be afraid, but you, you can't let that fear stop you from showing things off. I let that control me many times and it's not good for you. Um, you know, just show people, show people your stuff and you'll be nervous about it. But once it's out there, it's out there and you can't take it down because everything stays on the internet forever. And uh, that's a good thing because that will stop you from getting rid of something beautiful that people might enjoy. Um, anyway, so put your stuff out there, whoever you are, whatever it is, even if it's going to be controversial, put it out there. You know, I mean, for the love of God, put it out there because it'll make things better. I spit on my models. I do. I'm not afraid to tell people that. I'm not. And it's interesting. I think that people appreciate honesty because it's kind of hard to come by. You know, a lot of people are scared to be honest. A lot of people are scared to be called weird. Um, and my thinking is, well, if I am weird, which I wouldn't say I am, but if I am, I, I want people to know so that, you know, because imagine if it's like you're, you know, you're like, oh my God, I'm weird. I don't want people to know I'm weird, so I'm going to hide it. It's like, okay, well, then if you're hiding your weirdness from people and that's the only reason they like you, why do you want those people to like you? Like those people don't like, if they don't like weirdos, then they don't like you. Like just be honest about everything about yourself. Tell people. And if they leave, well, then they'll be replaced by people who appreciate you for all that you are, not just for the parts that you show them. Um, so that's how I, how I feel, right? Is that like, just tell people exactly who you are in totality. Don't hide anything. And eventually you will get very true peer friends who, you know, come to you and, and actually know who you are. Um, that's how I look at everything. Um, but you know, it's all about acceptance. It's all about, you know, feeling like if you put that art out there, it's not going to be received the way you want it to, but you got to do it anyway, because that's how you grow and learn and how you become, you know, a better artist and a better person. Um, so it's crucial. Yeah, Lemmy, your No More Secrets video helped me out because I love custom videos, says NeilFan18. That's great to hear. I'm really happy to hear that. Let's see. Scarloe, the old engine, I guess I should, I should say Asher, says, I don't like it when people humanize Thomas and Tug stuff. I love it because the thing is, trains are so restrictive. Like, I love Thomas as a character. I love Duck as a character, Gordon as a character, right? Like, I, but the thing is, they're, they're engines, and I'm a human. Like, I'm not an engine, right? I don't think anyone here is a steam engine. Like, are you? I'm certainly not. And um, I can relate more to a human than I can to an engine. Like, uh, you know, it's one thing to say Doc is, you know, very uptight and proper and follows the Great Western Way and follows every rule in the book and literally has the whole railway rule book memorized, right? You could say that, but you could put it in human terms and then it becomes so much clearer. It's like, okay, it's not just that Duck loves the Great Western Way. Imagine you put Duck in high school and he's the hall monitor. Like, you know, the guy who literally, you know, is uptight, you know, got great posture. You know, he's, he's going around and giving citations because, you know, uh, 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 you're, you're not supposed to close the locker that way. Uh, 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 hold on. No, that's not, there's too many books for the locker. Uh, hold on. No running in the holes, right? That's Duck, right? You know, and imagine that like that version of him in like in high school being the hall monitor right that doesn't that like reveal so much about him it like takes something that's so true about him and it puts it in human terms which we relate to and understand you know we're all familiar with the idea of a hall monitor we all know what that means we all know the type of person that becomes a hall monitor right and um you know it just it's that is such a brilliant way to expand upon the character. Now, of course, I would never want to just write for human stuff, right? I, I love the engines as engines. I love that, right? I love, there's so much, you know, I can I can do a bunch of stuff with Duck as a human, but I can't make his axle bent and give him a waddle, you know? I can't have him be an excellent shunter. I can't have him be a great Western engine. Those are all things that are exclusive to him being a locomotive. I love those things as well. 
but I love both versions. That's the thing. Railway series and TV series. Engine universe and human universe, you know, and anything else in between. I love any, I, I love these characters. I, I, with every fiber of my being, I love the eight famous engines. And so if I can get new versions of them and new and, you know, broadened horizons and really cool, you know, different versions, of course I'm going to want to, you know, see that. Are you kidding me? You know, and so it's like, even though, you know, it, and, and, and it's totally okay if you don't like it too. You know, if you, if it grosses you out or even if it's just disinteresting to you, that's fine as well. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, it, you have every right to dislike it. However, um, personally, I feel like, you know, I, I, I adore it, right? I adore humanized Thomas stuff because it just reveals so much about the characters, doesn't it? It's such a good way to make allegories. It's such a good way to like kind of, you know, to, to take the uh, the characters and bring them to life in a whole new fashion. Um, and I and of course, I'd always want the engine version too. I want both. You know, I want both. Um, but I love humanized stuff. I think it's the best. Um, you know, so for that reason. And it's because I've, I've known these characters so long, I want to see them in a new light. You know, I want to see what would Gordon be like as a human. You know, what exactly would that look like? So... If Duck was a human, he would be a politician, says Rolling Duck Studios. Yeah, exactly. I could so see that, right? Duck is a politician. That would be like, you know, he'd be one of those politicians where he would like toe the line and he would like, he would, he would, you know, he would, he would, he would be the one putting up all the red tape, right? The one who's like writing these long drawn out policies. He would like give a speech in Congress for like 13 hours, right? Just being there like, you know, and that's another thing. Oh, I think we should add this policy because it's very important to, and people are asleep, right? And he just won't shut up, right? Um, you know, that would be duck. I could so see that, couldn't you? <laughs> the Lemmy for its size is the coolest person I have ever seen in my life. And Floating Vessels is little jerk annoying Lemmy. This is Lem Lem says Floating Vessels. Well, I don't agree with that second part, Nick. Um, little jerk and Here, Here's the thing. Um, don't insult yourself, um, ever. It's bad for business. <laughs> it's bad for you. Um, I've, I've learned that, is that the more you, you, on a daily basis, how about this? Every time you say something insulting to yourself, slap yourself on the wrist. Um, because it is, you'd be surprised how often you tear yourself down without even realizing it. You know, you wonder, where do I, you know, what, what, why is it that I dislike myself? Well, maybe it's because you're insulting yourself constantly, you know, um, you know, even when it's a joke, even when it's a joke, it's still not okay to insult yourself. Um, that's what I've learned. Um, and you'd be surprised how often people do it without realizing it. So look out for it. I mean, I mean everybody look out for it. Uh, let's see. Lemmy, would you like to see my concept art for Suttery? Hint, hint. It's got the Ponty Pandy fire station on the hill. Or Birdie Spotted Edward, says Insane Edward. That sounds really cool. Uh, I would like to see it. Maybe send it to me in DMs. I'll try to check it, Sam, I promise. I may fail to check it, but I will try. Uh, let's see. Last time I was on Thomas DeviantArt, I saw this Gordon times Henry thing, and it's so weird because they're related in some way. Well, that's the thing, is like, it depends on if that's true or not. Like, the show never brings that up, right? That's like, and even the railway series never brings that up. People, history, and railways brings it up. And you could either use that to your full advantage and say, oh yeah, they're like cousins. And so, you know, they're like, you know, that's how Gordon knows Henry in the humanized version. It's like, you know, oh, that's my cousin Henry. He's so lame, right? You know, or it could be the opposite, right? They're not related to each other in the slightest. They're from totally different families. And, uh, you know, they encounter each other through work or or maybe they're fighting a war together, right? Imagine that. They're both on the front lines, and Gordon is like this badass, like, you know, I'll get the Germans, but then, you know, Henry's like, oh God, oh God, oh God, you know. Uh, and then the two of them run into each other in the trenches, ooh, and then they fall back, and, you know, it's like, you idiot, got my way, you know, and that's how they meet, right? Imagine that, right? Something like that. Um, I don't know why it's during World War II, but you know, it's just an idea. Um, you know, but, like, I ship Gordon and Henry. I can totally see that. That that makes perfect sense to me. Um, you know, they're like, you know, like Gordon and Henry almost behave that way, don't they? The way that Henry constantly like kind of tries to be just like Gordon 
and get close to Gordon and feel like, like I could see that totally being an avenue to take if somebody wanted to. Like, you know, I think Henry takes every opportunity he can to get close to Gordon. Maybe there's a reason for that in the human context, you know? I think, I think that works. Um, but a lot of people are really scared of that idea, right? A lot of people don't want to experiment with it. Well, I'm scared of Thomas and Tubbs being crossed over with each other. I don't want that to happen. That doesn't mean that I, th I declare that it's objectively weird, right? I just personally say, ah, it's not my thing. I don't like it. Um, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's valid, right? And at the same time, if somebody tells me about that idea, I'm still interested in it, right? It's like, if, if somebody I care about has the idea and comes forward with it, then naturally I'm going to listen and maybe they can even sell me on it, right? I mean, I know Sam has told me some stuff, uh, Insane Edward has told me some stuff that um, sounds really interesting. Um, it crosses Thomas and Tugs over unashamedly, and I think that's cool, right? Uh, I wouldn't do it myself, but maybe I would one day. Now that I've heard it from him, it's opening my mind to new possibilities. And it's the same thing with humanized Thomas stuff. If you are repulsed by the idea of James and Boko being shipped, I think the first thing to do is to look inside yourself and ask, why? Is it because I don't think it works? Is it because I have like rational reasons why it's like a bad story idea or a bad universe idea or why humanization doesn't work or why shipping doesn't work? Or is it just because, ew, gross, romantic train, right? If it's the second one, I feel like you got to grow up a little bit. You can still, you can still, you know, dislike, you know, shipping as a concept, but like, I feel like you should have reasons. You should look inside and wonder, why don't I like it? You should know what your reasons are and make sure they're not fed by disgust. But that being said, you know, like, it's a, it's a good point. You know, Henry and Gordon are kind of related. I've seen people ship Gordon and Spencer before. That right there is, I, I'm, I can't get down with that. I'm sorry, because they're unambiguously related. Like, that, they are definitely cousins. Um, they're, liter they're both Gresley Pacifics. Like, come on. Um, but Gordon and Henry, yeah, you could totally separate those two from each other. You know, I think it's not essential to Henry's story that he's a Gresley design. You could easily make him something else. I mean, the show kind of seems to do that, where it doesn't seem like they're actually related in the show, or hardly in the books, too. So you could crowbar the two apart from each other in, in terms of genetics if you wanted to. Um, you know, but yeah, I, I think that that's a cool idea to ship Gordon and Henry, but only if they're not related, obviously. <laughs> um, you know, but I think it works. You know, I think the way that they behave around each other is uh, sometimes they do kind of argue like an old married couple. It kind of makes sense. Let's see. Rolling Duck Studios says, uh, thoughts on Benry, <laughs> Bear times Henry. Um, that's really sweet. I, I could totally see that. That's That would be a very healthy relationship, I think. Um, yeah, that, that would be cute. Because the thing is, like, they're both, like, Henry... Bear is just a nice guy, you know, he's just good hearted, he's kind and friendly, and, you know, he's, and he's got strong principles, clearly, because he stood up to D199, and then maybe that strength would even be something Henry needs, because Henry is, I think Henry projects that he's strong, he says, oh, look at me, I'm a passenger wrench, you see that, little Percy? Uh, is, is that what you call them, little Gordon, that's that's the phrasing? Yes, yes, I call you little, little Thomas, little Percy, little James. Right, right, little Percy. Um, you know, but like, you know, when you think about how Henry is internally, inside he's screaming. Henry is the dog inside the house that's on fire, right? He's like, he's like trying to look cool and trying to be very impressive and trying to seem like Gordon. But he can never quite pull it off, let's be honest. You know, that's Henry, right? And so I think he kind of needs somebody with him who's strong and who has that like unbridled confidence. Um, that right there is what, um, is, is what Gordon is for him. But also Bear could be that, but without all the toxic ego that Gordon has, I could totally see that. Yeah, I think Bear and Henry is adorable. Um, you know, that's totally, you know, totally possible. Let's see. Uh, Nick says, Lemmy, you didn't forget that I told you how long ago is, how long Sunshine is a while ago, right? It's a very specific thing to bring up. I remember you telling me that, but why would I forget? And why is it relevant now is my question. But yeah, like 17.2 inches, something like that. Um, let's see. 
Um, I must say it Gordon times Rebecca, says Cheeky Bluey too. I don't know. I, I get more of a daughter feel off of Rebecca for Gordon. Like she's so much younger than him. She's kind of the next generation in a way. I kind of see her like that. Um, you could argue that they're that you could put them together though. That that's certainly possible. Um, I mean, I definitely think if I'm choosing from like the main Steam Team engines, it's probably going to be Gordon and Henry, just because they have way more history. Um, but you know, at the same time, you know, I think like Gordon and Rebecca would be interesting, because Rebecca is one of the few engines that has won Gordon's like what's the word? Not support, but won his respect without actually having to be a jerk to other engines. That's very rare that someone pulls that off with Gordon. You know, usually you have to kind of like, you know, you have to, you have to kind of bully someone else in order to win Gordon's respect. It's like, ah, yes, I see you made fun of Percy, Henry. Welcome to the team. You know, whereas like, I, I think Rebecca doesn't do any of that, and yet just through sheer size and strength, wins Gordon's respect. So that would be a very interesting pairing, for sure. Um, I'm more invested in them as friends, though, I think. Um, let's see. What else are folks saying? Let's see. Um, Asher says, I don't like it because they're engines. I think in the season five dub, I think he's gay. <laughs> um, let's see. But I couldn't see Boko and James and Gordon and James because that wouldn't work. The same goes for Tugs for me. Yet I have very different rules for Thomas and Tugs because Tugs, I feel like there are definitely romantic relationships in. I mean, if we if if we weren't convinced before, with Lily and Hercules constantly hanging out in the in the estuary and Sunshine catcalling Sally. I think we're definitely convinced now that Lily has called Hercules delicious. I think it's it's to the point where we can't deny it anymore. Um, Thomas, though, I don't think there are any romantic relationships in the show. Um, you could put them in there, and I think it could work, right, if you wanted to. I've seen some people do a good job of it. Um, but I'm not interested in shipping engines just because if I want to ship characters, if I want to add that element, if I want to add one extra element, romance, from human experience, why don't I just add all the other elements? Why don't I just add, you know, just make them human, right? Just go all out. And that's what I prefer to do, right? So I understand when people add romance into the engine side of things and don't change anything else. That's totally valid. But it's the fact that I prefer to go all the way. I prefer to just make them entirely human. Um, that being said, I don't think James is gay. I think, I think he's only attracted to himself. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't think I can't see James with anyone because I don't think he would. I don't think he would be able to date anyone but himself. Like his standards are too high. Like I, I think that might be the case. Um, so I don't see James really with anyone, uh, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like I, I can see it. I can see you know introducing shipping with engines as well. <laughs> James times James, says the Harbors of Sodor Productions. Let's see. Rolling Duck Studio says, remember when they made Rosie Red to make her less feminine, and then the first episode after the repaint they made was a story about her kissing Thomas? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, that... Yeah, no, you, you said it. Like, it's really annoying. I hate that episode. Because it just reduces both of them especially rosie it's it's kind of sexist it's like like really that's they don't it's just weird it's weird the whole thing's weird like you know firstly i don't want romance in the show um because the show is for all of us and not all of us want romance in the show um so it's better to play it safe um if it's somebody's fan content that's different but the other thing is that firstly they stripped rosie of her personality and livery took away her pink took away her bubbly, sprightly nature and made her someone else. So they took that away from her. So in, you know, visually, they de-feminized her, right? But then they feminized her character-wise by making a big deal about the fact that she was, you know, like being confused with like, like the whole Thomas thing, right? Like, I, look, I could see, I could see a situation where you wrote a story about Rosie being 
in love with Thomas. I could see that, right? She's so obsessed with him, right? She's so, she's so, she wants to take after him. She wants to do everything the way that he does. You can easily read that as like a little sister, but you could also read it as she's this engine on the mainland that's heard about the railway series. She's seen the TV series. Thomas is famous and she's like, I got to meet this guy, right? So she goes all the way to Sodor and falls in love with him, even though she doesn't know him. That would be a really interesting story, right? But the thing is, in that story, Rosie loves Thomas, and then Thomas would be like, oh, no, piss off. I don't want this. No, go away. No, I'm not, no, I'm busy. Leave me alone, right? That was his whole thing in Birthday Mail. Um, so for that reason, I, I really don't like Rosie as Red because it doesn't do that with either of them. Every other engine on the island is desperate for them to get together, but neither of them wants to. That's so weird. Like, if you did that with, like, another set of characters, then that would make more sense. Like, but Thomas and Rosie, in that episode, the problem is Rosie would be probably all over it, and Thomas would be annoyed, right? But he wouldn't be like, Thomas wouldn't be like, uh, hold on, guys, I'm not really down with that. Instead, he would be like, no, I'm not interested in Rosie, shut up, right? You know, like, it'd be that very big difference between those two, right? This right here was Henry, whereas this is Thomas. Henry, Thomas. <laughs> That's the difference, right? Um, you know, so I think that uh, I, I don't like that episode at all. Um, and I'm, you know, I think it's uh, it's a shame that they had to um, that they had to reduce Rosie like that. Let's see. Have I missed the spray? Asks Carl Matthews eight. No, you have not missed the spray. Uh, I'm still waiting for this to dry. It's, oh, it's very. It's oh. I think it's got like another 30 minutes to go, I dare say. Um, let's see. The way I write the whole train love thing is that the two engines in question just like each other more than friends and that's it, says Carl Matthews A. I agree. Like if I was gonna, if I was gonna like have to do like romance in engine terms, that like that's what I would do, right? Because the thing is, that's the point. Like, I think that's what a romance story is between two characters. It's just two characters really being enamored with each other more than anyone else, right? Like, Toby and Henrietta, don't tell me they're not an old married couple. I know they're not technically married because they're trains, right? But, like, look at the way they behave. Look at the way that they, like, those two are an old married couple. And they don't have to, like be attracted to each other for that to be the case. That's not what romance stories are about. They're just not. They're about, you know, the way the characters behave with each other. They're about the way that the characters talk to each other. Um, you know, that's that's what it's about. The, the way they feel about each other. You don't have to have some weird sexual component in there. You can if you want. That's not my thing. But some people like to do that. Whatever. You know, go do your thing. But, you know, I, for me, I think romance is a cool concept to write about. If we were talking about humans right now, this wouldn't be a question, wouldn't be a big deal. You know, romance is a part of almost every show that involves semi-human characters, right? Um, but in Thomas, it's not because, I, I don't know, because the, the community is mostly full of big buff men who don't want to talk about their feelings. Oh, you know, like, I don't care, right? You know, I mean, I... Uh, I think it's interesting. It's part of the human experience. So let's write about it. Why not? You know, I mean, I mean, you think we're not humanizing the engines already? We put faces on them, not just like a smiley face. We didn't just turn the, the windows into eyes. No, no, no. We took a human face like this right here. We took this and we put it on a locomotive. We didn't do it. Audrey did it, but it, we've done it many times since him. Um, we did that for hundreds of engines, and um, and that's it. We made it gray. That's the only other thing we did. It's just a human face on the front of the engine. Why do you think we did that? We did it because we wanted to relate to them. We did it because well, I can't really write a story about an engine, but if I give it a face and make it talk, then humans will be able to relate to it. That's the whole idea. That's that's why we did it. Um, you know, and so for that reason, I think that it isn't crazy to humanize the engines. We're already doing it. So why not just go further? Why not? There's nothing stopping us. I don't want the show to do it because the show, as I said, is for everybody. So it shouldn't do things that make a lot of people uncomfortable, but fan content should do whatever the hell it pleases. I think, um, the more crazy ideas we have, 
the more new things we do, more experiments, the bolder we get, the better. You know, that's what I prefer. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Well, Lemmy without glasses looks wrong. <laughs> I I look pretty much the same. I don't. It frames my uh, my eyes differently uh, when I have glasses on rather than not having them. Um, but yeah, let's see. Sam says, Lemmy, I almost cried today as I found my dad's old drawings of tugs. I never knew he could draw. However, my stepmom took them, and I don't know where she took them. What do you mean she took them? We can talk about this later, Sam. Again, I'll try to check messages. Um, but, um, like, took them as in, like, maliciously? Or, you know, took them as in, you know, she didn't realize you wanted them, or what? Um, but I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to find them, though. I mean, that's... That's powerful. Yeah, I mean, that, that's... That's nice that you could see those. I hope you get them back. Yeah, damn. Let's see. I'd like a story where Rosie is into Thomas, but Thomas is not into Rosie, but they keep crossing paths because they both work on the Farquhar branch. That would be pretty funny, says Melambique. Yeah, exactly, right? Wouldn't that be so entertaining? Like, that would be so great. Thomas would be, he'd come up with all these intricate ways to hide from Rosie, right? Like. Percy would be in Farquhar Yard shunting one day, and he'd bump into a truck, and the truck would go, ow! And it's like, that didn't sound like a truck. And then he realizes that Thomas has, like, wood paneling all over him, pretending to be a truck, and he's like, no, leave me alone, Percy, I'm hiding. <laughs> hiding from what? And then we hear Rosie, you know, whatever her whistle is in the background, and she's like, Thomas, I'm here! Oh, shit, Percy, hide me. <laughs> well, that would be great, right? That would be so funny, you know? Like, I love to see Thomas under pressure. Um... You know, it's very entertaining. Let's see. Um, the Harbors of Sodor production says, what Thomas fan content you watch besides Wooden Railway related? I, I mostly don't watch Wooden Railway related content. Um, I, I mostly, I, I don't know, I don't really watch fan content, period, lately. But what I used to watch was like Wild Norwester, Cactus 1907-06. Uh, I used to watch... Um, I love Sodor Dark Times. That was amazing. Uh, that was probably the most influential production that I've ever seen to me. Um, there's, you know, it goes without saying that I love all the things my friends have produced. Like my, you know, like the, like my super close friends, like uh, Train King James, uh, you know, Sodor A New Era is great. Um, there's, you know, Ted stuff is good as well, Oliver Duck. Um, I don't know. I mean, most of what really influenced me was in the, like the 2008, 2009, 2010 bracket. All the stuff that was around in that time that was done in trains and with models and stuff um, was really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, a lot of stuff. You know, I mean, there's a lot of really, really great stuff here, for sure. Yeah, I can't think of much else at the moment, but um, yeah, mostly it's the old stuff I go back and watch though, from the old days. That's I think what influenced me the most. How, let's see. Oh, I just skipped over a lot of messages. Dear, oh dear. Oh dear, looks like you've had some of the bad co. I've been sent to collect some fresh co. Let's see, Blue Tender Engine says, speaking of female characters, I recently purchased an Ertl Emily. Pretty, pretty rare. Yeah, it's really rare. That's great. Is it in good condition? Uh, good condition? Did you get it at a swap meet or something, or uh, online? Let's see. How would we show you the test models for Wooden Railway Tug series? Says George the Steamroller. Um, so you either so you send photographs of the model to either uh, my email at master lemons. Uh, there's no at. It's master of the lemons at gmail dot com. There's no at at the beginning. It's not Twitter. Or you can tweet me, or you send a tweet to me at Master of Lemons on Twitter. Of has zero in it. Um, or you can uh, you can DM me on Twitter, which most people probably uh, prefer. So um, so yeah, DM me on Twitter or send me an email just with the photographs of your model. Maybe say a little bit about it, you know. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm you know my DMs are open, so. Let's see. 
Uh, what else do we have here? Would you ever want Tugs to get a reboot, non-fan series? And if if so, how would you want them to do it? Says it's Falcon 2D. Well, of course. But would I? Here's the thing. I Tugs is our thing. I don't know if I want the general public to get it again. You know, like Tugs is such a big part of my life. I don't like the idea that another fandom could spring up that is unrelated. It's kind of like being like a Gen 1 My Little Pony fan or something. And then all the people from the new Friendship is Magic crowd come in. I'm sure that would have been pretty frustrating. It's like, oh, you like this new version? Like, we've been here for, you know, 10 years with the old version, you know. Um, that could be very kind of humiliating in a way to have... You know, to, to, to kind of feel like a like an outcast or stranger in your own fandom, um, where all of a sudden there's this new version of the show that counts more than your version. Um, I don't know. I mean, but so that's what I feel on an emotional level. But then on kind of when I think about it, I think, OK, but that's it's a good thing for more people to be exposed to this. But it, it depends on how they do it. I don't know. I kind of want Tugs to say to stay small. You know, I don't want it to get big. But I guess, barring that, you know, if it did have to get big, how would I want them to do it? <sighs> well, with models. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Tugs isn't Tugs without models. I mean, it can be, right? I mean, it's to me personally, what I love about Tugs is the models. And so, if it was in CGI, it would be really cool. It would be, and I would like that to exist, but it wouldn't be quite the same. And um, I don't know. I guess I wouldn't really want. I don't. I don't know if I wouldn't want Tugs rebooted. I don't know. I kind of. I, I don't think I would want any new canon material coming out that us fans don't have control over. So I feel like I wouldn't want that to happen. But if it did have to happen, I don't know. It's a complicated. I'm not really sure what my answer is. Let's see. Jamble says, Edward times Boko is a ship I like because they're both good for each other and it basically makes Bill and Ben their kids hitting enter too soon. Blech. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I would also ship those two. Like, I could totally see that. Edward and Boko. Because those two are just, you know... Boko's the only one who's really there for Edward. No one else is. The closest Edward has at Tidmouth is Percy. But even then, Percy is, like, too young. He can't really provide that support to Edward because he's too young to do so. Or too young at heart, really. He's not, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but with, um, you know, with Boko, Boko's the first engine that really... Duck is kind of like this as well, but Duck and Edward, I think, are very differently minded. Edward is all about compromise and mediating the situation, making sure that if everyone stops fighting, then we can solve the problem. Um, you know, whereas Doc believes in the rules very, very strictly. Doesn't matter if someone's about to fall off a cliff. If the rules say that that cliff is supposed to remain untouched, then by God, I am not going to touch that cliff. <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, so those two obviously will clash on things, right? Because Edward's like, Doc, I understand that the rules say this, but you must understand that it's not good for anyone. And then Doc would be like, you know, but Edward, it's what the rules say, but it's not good for anyone. But it's what the rules say, Edward. You know, like, you, there'd be this clash. Um, so, like, Duck is Edward's first real friend that kind of defends him, I think, uh, on the railway. Thomas is like that, but Thomas is on his own branch line, and he's constantly busy with other stuff, and he's constantly forgetting about Edward. Percy's too young for it. Boko is the first engine to come along who defends Edward, who's at his level, who has time for him, and who actually agrees with him on many policy issues. Boko, be the best vice president to Edward's president of all time. Edward should be the president. Boko should be the vice president. <laughs> um, you know, but, you know, anyway. Um, so I think those two um, would go great together for sure. Let's see. So Carl Matthews says, the only engines I ship at the moment is Jinty and Pug. Pug is female in my universe. Interesting. Yeah, I think that would... That would, that would probably work. I've never thought about that. I've never really thought about what Jinty and Pug's relationship to each other is. Like, I've always thought of them as, like, they're, they're two names I say next to each other constantly, but I've never even thought about what their characters would be. That's, that's cool. I could see that working. 
and they'd have a lot to lose throughout dieselization, you know, I mean, because those are very dieselization heavy characters, considering, considering they were introduced in 1956. And I'm sure they were built like 20 years earlier or whatever. But um, I think of dieselization when I think of those two. So imagine them braving dieselization together. And then at some point, Jinty, you know, gets scrapped or something and Pug has to carry on. Or maybe they both have to run away to save each other or something like that, right? It'd be a real dramatic, you know, beautiful story. I could, I could totally see that. Uh, let's see. Um, did I miss you spraying Flex Seal on your model? No, you didn't, you storyteller. I am still waiting for the Mod Podge to dry. It's getting close though. I think we're gonna be able to do this relatively soon. See, it's still sticky. It's just sticky enough that if I press too hard on this, I know I'm gonna pull it right off. Like, there's like a pebble trapped inside of there. Very slick. I love it. I love it. So cool. It's so nice to have something that you that never fails to make you happy. You know, everybody's got to have something like that. For me, that is building tugboats with faces. I never, I, I, I never dislike this. Look at that. That's great. It's the best thing in the world. There's a lot of things in the world, but this is the best. <clears throat> so, let's see. Oh, um, what did... I missed a lot of things. Let's see. Public gets tugs plus find out about deleted scenes equals trust less willing to release craps as the famous Hector. Um, hmm, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm not so worried about the trust. You know, I, I'm not so worried about, I'm, I'm not so worried about finding the deleted scenes. You know what I'm scared of is finding stuff out about tugs that changes the way I feel about the show. I kind of don't want to see more stuff. Like, if I were to see a new script or something, like a lost script, uh, that would, you know, that might tell me something about the characters that I didn't want to be true, but is canon, so, you know, like, I don't know. Pug is basically Thomas, except black, says Lester the Flame. I see. Uh, interesting description. Uh, Scarloe, the old engine, says, thanks, Nick. I guess uh, Loading Vessels uh, said, I think he said something earlier about about uh, Asher and I being awesome, which I appreciate. Thank you. Um, let's see. What are the 90s scripts for Tugs, says Thomas in the Stepney Productions. You mean the 96 scripts? You know, like the, the, um, like the, all the ones that were written for the show that didn't get produced? I have no idea, but uh, that's that's nuts. Like the fact that the crew wrote that many is crazy. God, like how like that's most of the show that we ha we don't know about that we haven't seen. Like just Jesus Christ! Like what what were they? And I said I was wanting a voice, sunshine, and grandpa's in your tugs films, said the new storyteller. And if you're talking to me, um, then uh, it would serve you to know that I don't intend to uh, cast voice acting uh, for a very long time. But eventually I should get there, maybe a year from now. So that will definitely be appreciated then. If we do decide to select you, then it'll be greatly appreciated. Um, are you going to saw the boat in half and seal it with flex tapes at the Rolling Duck Studios? No, because it would compromise the integrity severely. 
Um, it might be watertight, but it would not be structurally sound. <laughs> um, hey, Lemmy, what's your favorite Tugs episode? So ask sign Matthew. I was thinking about this the other day. I tend to say jinxed because it's the first one I saw. But I think it's Pirate. I think Pirate's my favorite. It's really good. You get to see all the Tugs in one place. Um, you get to see them all working together. You get to uh, just the Tugs inside a room inside a warehouse is really cool to me. And like how the old man's up out of the water and like the pirates are cool. Sea Rogue is a really cool design. Like there's just something about that episode. It's a good example of Ten Cents' character. Grampus gets his time to shine in that. Top Hat Warrior have some great stuff. Uh, overall, it, it, Zip and Zug are great as well. It's just really good. It's really, really, really good. It's probably pirate right now. It's the one I recreated the most as a kid. Uh, let's see. Boko is Diesel Edward, says Scarlet the Old Engine. He's the closest thing to him, but I do think that Boko lacks some of... Like, I think Boko is a little bit more willing, a lot more willing to stand up for himself, actually. He's like Edward, but not quite as patient, and also not quite as wise. Still very wise, but not quite as wise. And also willing to stand up for himself. Edward isn't. Edward's a pushover. Edward will stand up for others until the day he dies, but he won't stand up for himself. He's a welcome mat, you know. Um, not a doormat, a welcome mat. Um, but you know, Boko isn't. Boko will just tell you to piss off if you if you you know if you're if you if you become too much for him, right? He has limits. Edward has limits too, but he doesn't express them and he just suppresses them, and that's not healthy. So Boko's healthier than Edward. But he's also not quite the force for good that Edward is. Boko is a great force for good, but not quite as much as Edward. Just a little bit, you know, Edward goes a little bit further. He's willing to sacrifice just a little bit more. Let's see. Sam says, hey, let me please show your redacted. It's redacted because I told you that in confidence, Sam. Um, I'm not actually going to redact it. And don't you redact it either. Once something's on the internet, um, it's there forever. I cannot stand when somebody removes a message. It's like, you don't get to, you got, don't get to unsay something. You don't, right? Don't delete tweets. Don't delete messages. Don't, once it's said, it's said, own it. Um, but that being said, um, that was, I did tell you that in confidence, Sam. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show it to anyone, let alone tell every, anyone that it even exists. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, Percy, Jinty, and Pug as a friend group is interesting to me because it feels a lot like Percy is getting to be the leader of a group in the same way Thomas is the leader of the Farquhar trio, says Jamble. That's really good. That's true. That would be like, it would finally be his big chance to like be like Thomas, right? And his friend group would be so much healthier and more productive than Thomas's friend group. <laughs> like Thomas would get jealous. He'd be like, oh, what's he doing over there? What's, what's he got that I don't? And Toby would be like, well, patience, maybe. And, um, you know, he's actually friendly. But I'm friendly. I have, like, a hundred friends. How many of them do you, do you actually talk to on a daily basis, Thomas? I saw Neville a few weeks ago. Exactly my point. <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway. Oh, wow. It, it keeps skipping all this stuff. This is the trickiest way to do a live stream. <laughs> Jamble says, curse timeline. The 96 scripts are all the rough drafts of the final episodes and there's nothing actually new in them. That would be ideal. I would prefer that. Um, you know, I, if, if we actually did see the 96 scripts, then I would be devastated because like, we already don't get enough people writing tug stories. So what, on top of that, now we're going to have a bunch of new stories that didn't even get adapted. It's like, Hey, you can't, you can't make a story until you adapt these go on. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't want that. No, I don't want any new tug stuff. I want the new tug stuff to come from us, right? 
we're the ones who are responsible for it now. I don't want I don't want David Mitten writing us stories from beyond the grave. Are you kidding me? He's done. He's kaput. He's finished. That was to be months. That was to be months you told me in your last dream I missed, the new storyteller. That was to be months. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> hey Lemmy, can you show your TWR boomer? that you were working on in your stream with Bailey. Uh, it's upstairs, not convenient. Um, and uh, I may not make it Boomer. I may make it Sea Rogue instead. I'm not sure. Um, how would you make TWR Grampus? This is a good question. I don't know. Um, I mean, he'd be flat on the bottom. I'm, I don't know how I do the face of the thing, like the slide on paper face. Like, how do I do that? No, I think I know. I think I'd probably make it a, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe someone else will have a good idea about it. Uh, let's see. I got introduced into Tugs by Victor. Victor? Tanzig? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Do we not mention that Tencent's killed a buoy and with, with with his hooter and jinx? Says Cheeky Bluey too. He did. Um, it seems like life is very cheap in big city port. That's what I'll say. Um, let's see. My last event I went to was the best as I saw Big Mickey and as Vienna along with purchasing rare Bandai Thomas Japan toys says Blue Tender Engine. That's cool, Matt. That's really cool. Is Big Mickey, how big is Big Mickey? Like, like not in terms of like his height, but like in terms of like, what's it like to be next to the head? Let's see. Asher says, all right, Lemmy, I got to have breakfast. See you soon. See you soon then. Uh, let's see. Oops, sorry, Lemmy, I forgot. You told me that in con but con confidons. Bugger. Didn't mean to spoil anything. Sorry, Lemmy, says Sam. Yeah, it's all right, Sam. Um, the things I really, really don't want spoiled, I don't show anybody. Um, you know, so there's a, there's a, there's a chain of, chain of, uh, what, what's the, what's the word? I guess chain of custody for these sorts of things. Edward would pull a gun out to protect his friends, and Boko would pull one out <laughs> to scare Bill and Ben. <laughs> Says uh, the, the uh, uh, Me Mechagoji74. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I love the idea that Percy has slash had more friends on the mainland than on Sodor. Says Carl Matthews. Yeah, I love that too. At this point, I see it as like a key part of Percy's character that he's like lived this whole life outside of Sodor before he even arrived. Like, I bet he has like, he's worked in like 10 different places. He has tons of friends. Um, you know, somebody uh, on the, uh, one of the character galleries suggested that that's why Percy, um, why Percy pulls the mail, why he loves it so much. It's because he gets to send letters to all his friends. And that was a brilliant idea. Can't remember who came up with it. Oh, uh, let's see. Thoughts on why anyone is finding Takara Tug's characters with moving eyes hard to find, says the new storyteller. With moving eyes. Is don't they all have moving eyes? Um, and they're they, they're hard to find because they're rare. <laughs> That's why. I, I I almost wish the Takara models didn't exist. Because people just waste so much money on a model that they can make a better version of. Like, uh, I mean, if you really, really want the thing, that's that's totally up to you, right? That's totally valid. But, I mean, you could do better. Pretty much anyone can make a model that looks better than the Takara models. Their proportions are weird and squished. You realize if somebody made a model like that out of cardboard, that people would look at that and be like, okay, it's good, but that's not the best, right? Because it's like, it's just the proportions are off and squished and they're, they're, they are condemned to be inaccurate by the restrictions of manufacturing processes. I mean, it's just, it's, I don't know. People could do better. 
you know, instead of like people spend on average more money on a Takara 10 cents than I spent building Blue Nose. You realize that? I spent under $100 on Blue Nose. You know how much people spend on a 10 cents? It goes into the hundreds. Why? Why? Because it's made of plastic? Because it's real? I don't know. I This seems pretty real to me. What's, buddy, what's with the sandpaper? I thought I'd take it with me in self-defense. I didn't expect you to pick me up like this. Well, you thought wrong. But anyway, the point being, I don't know. I think this is pretty cool. And uh, it's cheaper than I took our 10 cents. Now, it takes time to make, right? But you, you also don't get any satisfaction from making a Takara model, or from, from buying one, right? You know, you, it's just like, you know, oh, okay, I had money. Very good. I have the money, now I will buy the model. Like, you know, it kind of takes all the fun out of it, in my opinion. You know, you want to make it. That's, that's, that's better. Let's see. I'm about to start making my test model, then, he says the Scottish Twins. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, go ahead. I mean, that's, you know, I'd love to see it. Um, you know, and uh, no hurry on that. Let's see. I'm about to start making uh, oh, the same one I just read. Let's see. There is barley and there's barely any Tugs fan content. I know there should be a lot more. The reason is everyone gets scared off from the fact that they got to make their own models. It's not that hard. It just requires, you know, put yourself out there and actually making something right. But people struggle with that. People get scared of that. You know, they don't want to take the risk. Well, you know, it's not that big of a risk. I'm here to tell people. I ship Mod Podge and Flex Seal. <laughs> yes, I agree with you, Cheeky Bluey, too. I, too, ship Mod Podge and Flex Seal. Um, we're actually quite close to that shipping process. I'll ship them on camera for you all to see. Um, good God. This is, yeah, this is very close. Like, the fact that I can actually pick it up like this and not rip it off is very good news. Whoa, now we Can I just say I'm so glad that the deck comes out on this one? I haven't done that before. That's a new thing I did for this, you know, video series. That's so cool. See, like, when I'm looking at it, like, when I'm this close, it looks enormous. But then when I put it over here, it looks small. Like, it's crazy how these models work. <laughs> I ship Lemmy times Blue Nose, says, uh says Nick. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, let's see. I meant when I asked if I could play Grampus and Sunshine, which we haven't gotten that far yet. Says the new storyteller. Um, I still do not understand. I meant when I asked if I could play Grampus and Sunshine, like, but like, like when, you mean like in a year? Like you're, ask, like you're asking, like, could you play them a year from now and you're willing to wait? Um, yeah, if we choose you from the auditions. I mean, I'm not just assigning people at random. It's not like somebody comes up to me and they're like, hey, I want to voice Soren. It's like, I haven't even heard your voice. <laughs> like, I, you know, I don't know for sure, you know, if you're a good fit. You know, it's kind of got to like, um, you know, you've got to actually do an audition for that part. Um, I'm kind of auditioning people for everything, more or less, right? There's people I'm bringing in without auditions, if I already know them well enough to know what they can do. Um, but, you know, I think for the most part, you know, it, the voice acting is going to be audition based. So, you know, you may be brought in or you may not. Um, but regardless, um, your, you know, your offer of a contribution is greatly appreciated. Um, now, let's see. Lemmy, please kiss Blue Nose, says, uh, says uh, Nick. I will not do that. Not not if I'm asked to. I, it's, only, it's, only, it's only if no one asks me. That's when I'll do it. Uh, let's see. Did you show that Marquin? Did you know that Marquin, the same company that gave the chassis for the Thomas models, made HO models? And I have one that is a silver version of the Marquin engine. Says the the Me Mecha Goji seventy four. I do know that they made a Thomas and Percy that shared the uh, chassis with their shared the uh, the bodies with the Hornby models. It was really cool. Um, I always wanted those as a kid. Let's see. I have three Tugs characters made i have 10 cents zip and big mickey says thomas and stepney productions that's amazing that's awesome that's so cool uh let's see the tugs models feel so odd with how big they are in person 
but so small when looking at behind the scenes pics as the famous Hector. I know it's nuts. It's like, I, I didn't realize how big they were until I actually made one. Like the first time I got a sense for how huge they were was making a 10 cents back in like 2016. Uh, and then it got even more evident when I made uh, like a, I think the first one I made was a top hat, not a Big Mac, but I scrapped that top hat. I didn't get very far. Um, but, but like I made that model, my first Harbor tug, I was also amazed. I was like, Oh my God, this is huge. Right. Um, you know, so you don't really get a sense for it until you're literally holding the thing. You just can't, you can't wrap your head around how big these models are without actually like, you know, having one in front of you. That's why it's so cool to make them. Cause that shouldn't be possible. Right. Like if I don't understand fully how big the models are, if I can't envision that, well, then I shouldn't be able to make something that then tells me how big it is, but I am, right? Like I didn't retrieve, I didn't receive any new information. I already knew that, you know, this model was supposed to be 28 inches long. I knew that already. And it's not like in between learning that information and making this model, I saw the real model. I didn't, right? I technically, I haven't gotten any new information and yet, I, I have, because now I know what it's like to hold one of these. I know how big it is. I'm learning things about the models without even actually seeing them. That's crazy. Like the fact that I'm just making a model that represents them, that tells me something about it. It's kind of like in science, where if you make a model of the earth, if you make a model of things, then it'll kind of, you'll be able to simulate things that you can't actually observe, right? That's the same thing here. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, they, they look really small in pictures. Let's see. This isn't Tugs related, but have you seen a new film of Ten Cents in the first episode of season three? Titipo, Titipo the model version. Titipo is that the thing on Netflix? I've I've run across that with my sister a few times. This isn't related. This isn't Tugs related, but have you seen a new film of Ten Cents in a first episode? I haven't seen that. Ten Cents in Titipo. I don't know what that means. Ten Cents is overrated as he is just like a James Thomas character. No, he's not. He's the to Tom Ten Cents is nothing like Thomas or James. Thomas and James are very similar to each other. They're both, you know, quite vain, really. And they're also both uh, hotheads who kind of talk too much. Um, you know, but uh, Ten Cents is more like Duck. He's very disciplined very, you know, he's a little too, um, you know, dedicated to the rules. Um, you know, he's, um, you know, he's just a very, he's, he's a goody two screws, right? Isn't that what Zug calls him? Um, you know, that's what he is. He's a lot like Duck, I would say. Um, so I don't think he's overrated. I think he's a great character. Let's see. Hey, Lemmy, I'm considering for my series when the tugs as still in big city, Upriver, I should expand the big city railways local fleet so it's more characters than Papa and the Goods Engine, says Sam. Yeah, I think that's, I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, you know, that's, that's definitely what I'm going to do for Tugs TWR. What I want to see, I want to see, it, like, big city basically replaces New York, right? That's basically what it is. So, what I want to see is what is, like, big city station like, right? There's got to be, like, big Pacifics coming in. I always thought the steam engines and tugs were really wimpy. Like, they kind of suck. Like, there's two shunters? That's it? That's all? I want to see the Hudsons. Where are the huge, big, you know, enormous, you know, steam engines? You know, the ones that are like Gordon, right? Where are the Connors and Caitlins? Those are the ones I want to see. Where are those guys, right? I mean, you know, those, those are the cool ones. That's what I think of when I think of New York City, right? So, you know, I, I, I really want to add stuff like that. Um, you know, not quite by the dock side, but maybe going over bridges and stuff, you know, that'd be cool. Let's see. I'm making a Tomi Puffa and it's taking a while. So scroll out the old engine. Yeah. I and mean, engines probably are going to be the most complicated of all the tugs models, I would say, because they have wheels. <laughs> uh, Blue Nose makes Thomas models out of sandpaper the same way you make tugs models out of cardboard yeah i agree carl matthews you got it <laughs> have you ever seen the video tugs seen the video tugs puffa clip that's the not very specific thomas and stephanie productions 
Um, in tugs, wooden railway, uh, with, will the locos have faces or megaphones? Faces. I definitely want to give anything that has a megaphone that isn't a human, I'm going to give a face. Like, of course, Captain Star and Zero will still have megaphones, but I don't see, I don't see any reason why Mighty Mo or Little Ditcher or Puffa or any of them should have megaphones. Like, I, I want to give them faces. I don't know how I'm going to put faces on them because I don't want it to look like Thomas. Like, Puffa shouldn't just look like a Thomas character, but I'll find some way to do that, whatever it is. A cow catcher is hard. I use toothpicks, says Scarlo with the old engine. That's that's good thinking, Asher. Um, that also sounds like a real pain to make, but once you make it, it'll be really cool. Uh, let's see. Thomas and Stepney Productions says, just look up Tugs Puffa, and then there it's in the first result. Huh, interesting. I might do that later. Um, let's see. Mighty Mo has a slate truck sized face. Lol, says the famous Hector. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. <sighs> I think we're pretty close to, uh, to the moment we've all been waiting for. I think it might be time. See, it's still sticky, like... You kind of hear that, like that sound, like that, it means that it is still kind of like sticky, but it's, it's in place now, it's firm. All right, I think, uh, I guess what I'll do is move the camera outside and we'll get prepared for the flex seal process. So uh might be 10 or 20 minutes. We shall see. But uh, I, will, uh, I will see you all then.
All right. So everyone let me know how audible I am from this distance and outside with the wind going. Let's see, am I visible? <laughs> so I put cardboard down in order to prevent this cardboard from getting the sand uh, dirty. I can hear you, buddy, says Matt. Awesome. You're cool. Be back. All right, very good. All right, so this part is kind of obvious. I'm literally just going to take the flex seal. And it says to, like, shake it for, like, a minute, so I'm just going to do that. Eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. All right. Very good. Now I'm just going to spray it. Let's see, what are people saying? Shake, shake, buffering, milkshake. Excellent. All right. So I'm starting with white flex seal. I have two types. I have white and I have black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this whole thing in white. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to wait for it to dry which takes like uh, 24 hours. And then I'm gonna spray over it again in black. And then that way I will see where I missed. So the parts where it is in black, it'll be obvious like, oh, okay, those are gaps and I'm gonna fill those. Um, you know, whereas if I spray this white and then spray a second coat white, I'm not gonna be able to see where I missed. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to do. And I'm gonna go back and forth like that for maybe four coats. So I'm gonna spray white today. I'm gonna do all the rest off camera. So the hole's going to be black next week when I stream. Uh, that'll all be done. It'll all be waterproof. I'm going to test it for the first time next week, so I won't know for sure it's waterproof until next week, but I will have sprayed the four coats by then. Uh, so I'm, assume, I'm, I'm just hoping that showing this once, people will just be able to repeat the method over and over. But four coats is what I would suggest. Um, that's usually what I end up doing. So I'm going to go white once, and then black over that, and then let that dry a day. White over that, let that dry a day black over that, let that dry a day, and then I'm just going to keep it black because, you know, that's what color the hole's supposed to be. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, I think I'm ready. So, so I try to, like, go over it real quickly. Like, you see that? And notice I don't spray much in one place. I can already smell the smell of it. Do this, do not use this stuff inside. This stuff is for use outside. All right, that's one side of it. You won't see this other side. But it's happening.
not really supposed to touch this. I don't think. I, don't, I have no clue. Again, this is one of those things that if you're under 18, ask your parents about it or parent or legal guardian or whoever you've got looking after you. But I do want to make sure, because this will change the texture and shape ever so slightly. I want to make sure that I don't, if it's like lumped on it too thick at some point, I do want to get in there now rather than letting it dry in that shape. I brought one of these little black flat brushes out here as well. These things could be good to kind of, you know, iron things out. You'll go through this stuff fast. tricky because I can't move the thing because I'm spraying it in totality so I've got to kind of do this instead. What I'm doing is I'm going around all the uh, splash rails and I am I'm cutting in everywhere that it should remain kind of a sharp edge. Really what I should have done probably is done this coat in two parts. Because the splash rails are going to get kind of a different coat. You don't want to go over it too thick. I think I may have. Yeah, I think that's okay. It's difficult too, because sitting in the middle of an enormous sandbox right now. So naturally there is sand being dropped all over the place. I don't want to get that on the model. don't want to overdo it. It's better to do one really thin coat than a thick coat that coats everything too heavily. Because you lose a lot of definition. The thicker a coat you put on,
probably have a cup of water nearby. I just licked a finger that is not one I've already touched the flex seal with. Do not eat flex seal. Do not. But still, shouldn't be licking my fingers at this time. <sighs> Very, uh, this is maybe the most stressful part of the process. Technically, we can probably get away with not even spraying the splash rails because we're not going to touch the water. I mean, we're not going to spray the superstructure. That's way too much right there. I don't like spray paint. But it's the only way to make this part of the model smooth. And also make sure that I'm adequately covering it. Brush is totally ruined, by the way. It's not really gonna. I think all this flex seal is gonna cake right onto it, but it was already kind of ruined. That's why I picked it. What we need is some water right here. That lets it spread a little bit better. Can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm trying to retroactively smoothen out this section. In fact, let me try to spin this. You see that? How it's all scraped up along here? That's because I tried to fix something. And usually, it's not very workable. Trying to fix stuff doesn't usually go over too well. Uh, 
That'll work. <sighs> Yeah, I think that'll be good enough. Let's see. Blessed of the Flame says, yes, the only difference is that the engines have faces. They might change it a little because of the engines having faces, but not really. Even Transformers is, uh, is canon to the Railway series, says the Harbors of Sodor. I don't know what the conversation is. <laughs> This is always the, the anxiety-inducing part of the process, of spraying this flex seal on. Because then I just have to wait, right? Like, when I'm putting the Mod Podge on, if I, if I uh, mess up, right? If I put too much on, or if I, like, kind of you know, scrape into it by accident, I can just smooth it over nice and easy, right? But with this, it's a spray. And the thing I hate about spray paint is once you spray it, it's out of your hands. If you try to fix it, it will never be anywhere near as uniform as the part you just sprayed. So you just gotta kind of got to leave it. And I, I, I'm not good at leaving it. I don't like that. <sighs> but, um, yeah. But the standout thing is the shape, the proportions. You know, not the, uh, not the color, not the texture, not any blemishes on the surface. The key thing that will matter in the end is whether the boat is proportioned well or not. You know? Take two and try to fix something. Bad idea already. Thing is the paint is dripping right there. It's not paint, but still. I don't want drip marks on here. But that's the thing. Like the things I notice about Blue Nose, the things about his hole I don't like, it's not the blemishes. It's the fact that it's too tall. It's the fact that it's uh, tapers too much at the front. You know, and those are things that we already figured out. So I tend to obsess over this step of the process, but there's really no need because this is not what defines how good the model will look. It really isn't. It's the shape. And the shape is flawless. So that's really what matters here. But even then, if the shape isn't flawless, even if the shape is bad, like, it can't be bad, really. I mean, you know, you made a whole tugboat hole on your own. And that's like, that can't not be cool, you know? And it's a showstopper. No matter how good it is, no matter how accurate it is. Obviously, we all, you know, a lot of us want to make a super show accurate model, but you realize any model at all is impressive. Not everybody has the confidence or the drive or the enthusiasm to make something from scratch. But that's what we're doing. All right. Well, I think that's the end of the stream. So I'm gonna leave this to sit for 24 hours and then I'm gonna spray over it with black, leave it another 24 hours, spray over it with white again, another 24, spray over it black again and that should be the final coat and then i guess next stream i don't know maybe i i think next stream we'll test if the thing floats properly and if it does then i think we have, might actually paint the splash rails white just so that you know we can actually like just because i think that would be cool 
you know, to actually see for sure if it looks like the show, I think you need to paint the splash rails. Because you won't be able to tell for sure until you paint them. But, um, yeah, I, I think that might be what we do next time. Good glory. Look at how globbed up that is. You can't even see the other side. Like, this is really the side that's got the problem. Oh, it's way too much right there. I think I fixed it. So this is what I hate. It really accumulates around the heel. And you, you start out with this nice thin heel, and then it just gets so thick. Do not lick your fingers uh, to do this. Like, get a cup of water before you start. That's what I should have done. And I'm regretting it now. Get a cup of water and dip your finger in there to kind of smooth out imperfections. Because if you want to smooth something out, your finger's sticky, okay? When you touch the model, it's going to just smear the whole thing to the side. You don't want that. If you want to smooth out a tiny little imperfection and make it flat, then you want your finger to be wet because that way it'll, there'll be way less friction. It'll let you work easier. So get a cup of water before you start. <sighs> God, this part is stressful. None of the other parts are. None of the other parts are. This. Because I have to trust the flex seal. I don't like trusting things. I just like doing it myself. But no, I have to use some sort of magical... How dare you? You realize how close... There's not a grain of sand on there, but there could have been Phil. Phil. Don't give me that face. <sighs> Alright, look. Um, I, don't, I don't like relying on like a magical miracle potion right i like just doing stuff myself um like mod podge is workable right i'm basically sculpting it and if i had another substance of the same sort of you know it doesn't have any magical special quality but this here is waterproof that's why i use it and uh, it's not like i can i can adjust how waterproof it is based on how much i put on it's like no it's just waterproof Let's just put that on there with mod podge if i'm trying to serve to smooth out the surface well, I control how smooth it is based on the tactics that I use to kind of sculpt it into shape. But what I don't like about this is it's like, I, I only know if this is waterproof when I put it in the water. I have to test it. It's function. I don't like function. I like appearance. You know, I like that when I finish it, it looks good. And I know that for a fact when, I'm, when I do it. But I'm going to have to wait a week to figure out if this even floats. I know it will. Because, you know, it worked on Blue Nose, and it will definitely work here. So I have no doubt about it, but still, it makes me nervous. And I'm worried that I'll spoil the appearance using this Flex Seal stuff. But i got to use it. Gotta use it. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've gone as far as we can today. I've been Master of the Lemons, aka Lemmy. Uh, take care, everybody. Uh, it's been uh, it's been fun. A lot of dead space today. Uh, next week we will we will actually test the model in water and uh, we will weight it. So we'll put it on, you know, we'll give it weights so that it'll actually sit upright. It's going to be this big weight harness that sits, that hangs underneath the model. And uh, after next week, and maybe even next week we'll, uh, we'll paint the, uh, the splash rails. And when that's done, um, finally we can get back to actual modeling. Um, you know, so shape stuff. So, uh, you know, after next week, uh, probably the superstructure and the head and stuff. And that's going to be fun. That's when it really becomes fun. Anyway, so take care, everybody.
Uh, stay safe.